What's up guys, this is your favorite fanfic YouTuber, the fanfic majesty, and welcome to another amazing video. You can follow me on Patreon for exclusive stories. 2BA. Chapter 21 The Fruit of the Common People. With the Dongtata tribe, Dylan had no choice but to return to Magnetic Drum Island by boat. Neither Manchweli nor Leo could withstand the friction caused by ultra-high-speed movement. This is why Dylan told Dr. Kurha from the very beginning that he would need a month to go back. Halfway through the voyage, the two CP organization ships came together. Dylan looked at the CP0 who had never shown his face. It's just using your boat, what are you doing with a bad face? This time CP0 didn't say anything like, according to the regulations, you can't directly command the CP, but said slightly jokingly, maybe you are the real chief of CP0. In view of Manchweli's ability, Bell's injury is absolutely certain, and Dylan's mood has also improved. Tell me, what's the matter? CP0 put the suitcase in his hand in front of Dylan and took out a small box from his arms. This is the fruit that Mariajoy promised you earlier, and what you commissioned Vegapunk to make. Huh. Dylan ignored the suitcase on the ground and took the small box in his hands first. A silver gray ring lay in the box. Vegapunk said that the ring itself is made of a special alloy. At present, no one or any means can destroy it with brute force. Of course, some weird fruit abilities cannot be ruled out. Dylan put the ring on his finger, and a strange feeling appeared in his consciousness. Looking at the suitcase on the ground and CP0 standing opposite, Dylan raised his mouth. CP0 disappears in place. Ring space. CP0 stands in the empty castle. Quote dot 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 quote. Quote dot dot dot. Don't make such silly jokes, let me out, I still have a task. Dylan's mind moved, and CP0 appeared in place again. Yes, I am very satisfied. Dylan looked at the ring on his hand with great joy. Space ring, awesome. Picking up the suitcase and opening it, it was a red gold devil fruit, the texture of the fruit showed a sharp feather. What breed? CP0 looked at the fruit in his hand and seemed a little envious. Zone bird bird fruit phantom beast species Garuda form. Garuda, the one that eats dragons. So cute. Do you want it steamed or braised? But at present, I don't have anyone who is suitable for eating this fruit. But it is always right to collect more good things. After putting away the fruit, Dylan watched for a while the four Dante warriors practicing on the boat. Hey, Leo. When Leo heard Dylan's voice, he came to Dylan's side in an instant. Dylan Lando. Leo stood seriously in front of Dylan, as if waiting for his order. Huh, why are you so serious? Dylan was a little surprised. After hesitating for a moment, Leo said, the king told me before we came that we came here bearing the fate of the Dongtata clan and carrying the name of justice, at the same time. So please tell me anything. It's really reliable, Captain Leo. Leo looked at Dylan, a little embarrassed, but still tensed his small body. It's this Leo, your racial talent is very special. Of course, I don't mean plant cultivation, but your physical fitness. The Dongtata tribe is born with strength several times higher than that of humans, similar to Leo and Wicca, and even dozens of times stronger than ordinary people. They are short in size but very fast in action, which is very suitable for shuttles in the battlefield to find weak points. I think of something that is very suitable for you, and it should be easy for you to master with your talents. What is it? Dylan Lando. Leo's eyes lit up. As a fighter, he also craves power. Especially when Princess Mancherly and her companions were taken away, but there was nothing he could do. One is a technique unique to Marine called Six Forms. One is hockey. After thinking for a while, Dylan said, Although Marine Six Styles has seven moves, I don't think the others are suitable for you. You can just focus on practicing shaved, moonwalk and finger pistol. As for hockey, if your strength is combined with the hardening of your armed forces, your combat effectiveness should be significantly improved. On the way to Magnetic Drum Island, Dylan carefully explained the use of the six styles in hockey to them. In order to avoid his own explanations not being detailed enough, Dylan also pulled out CP0 as a guest lecturer from time to time. Although six styles is known as, Marine Six Styles, the real expert has to be, CP Organization. Shave. Advertisement. Leo's figure flashed, and if it wasn't for Dylan's strong sense of knowledge, he wouldn't even be able to capture his movements. Not bad. Leo, this move is really suitable for you. Thank you very much. Dylan Lando. Leo stood in front of Dylan and bowed. Just when Dylan was about to be polite, the whole boat shook wildly. Boom. Boom. In the far corner, Wicca was crazily hammering the deck. Damn it, why am I so weak? Why am I so stupid? Why can't I always learn? Looking at the cracked deck, CP0 and Dylan, who were standing next to Dylan, exchanged glances. Quote dot 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 quote. Quote dot 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 quote. That, Wicca, 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 don't hammer it, if you hammer it down, the ship will sink. Seeing armament hockey, whose hands were covered with shiny tiles, kneeling in the corner and beating Wicca on the, ground, frantically because he didn't learn to, shave, Dylan hurriedly stopped her loudly. Ah, Dylan Lando, I'm sorry, have I caused you trouble again? I'm such an idiot, damn it, I. Seeing that Wicca was about to lay down on the ground and cause secondary damage to the deck, Dylan hurriedly said loudly, stop, stop. Don't hammer yet, although the ship is not our own, it will delay the journey if the hammer breaks. CP0 turned his head and looked at Dylan expressionlessly. Wicca walked up to Dylan wiping her tears, and cried, Dylan Lando. 
Dylan stretched out his hand, and Wicca jumped onto his hand with some embarrassment, looking at Wicca who was still crying, Dylan flicked her forehead lightly. Who said you were weak? As soon as this topic was mentioned, Wicca's tears immediately fell again. Leo and the others have all learned about June 4th, and I have learned nothing about it. Didn't you learn armament hockey? Armed color. Hockey. When you hammered the boat just now, didn't you notice anything wrong? Wicca raised her hand and wiped her tears. No. I just feel stupid and sad. Awakening of the unconscious. But this character, Tisk, forget it, leave it to Bel Mel. They were women anyway. Hum. Woman. After finally appeasing Wicca, the boat finally arrived at Magnetic Drum Island. When everyone returned to Dr. Kurha's castle, Bel Mel had already woken up. The moment he saw Dylan, Bel grinned. I caused you trouble, Dylan. Dylan gave her a blank look, and said angrily, now you know why I didn't bother with the pirates in New World, do you? Bell laughed loudly. Ah, ah, I'm disgusted again. Although both of them were mean-spirited, they couldn't hide the concern and gratitude in their eyes. Dr. Kerha was sitting by Belmel's bed drinking wine, and he was relieved to see Dylan come back. This woman's injury is indeed beyond the ability of ordinary people to heal. What is he going to do? Manchwaley, please. Dylan turned his head to look at Manchwaley sitting on his shoulder, and said with a serious expression. When Shirley flew out, Dylan suddenly thought of something, and said aloud again, it's enough to heal her injury, surely man, don't waste your life to let him return to its original state, your health is also very good it's important. Man Shueli in the air was startled, and she twisted her hands together. She originally planned to use special abilities to heal the wounds of the woman in front of her. After all, this was the first time Dylan Lando had asked her to do something. Lilliputian. Dr. Kerha looked at Man Shueli, a little puzzled. Bel Mel is not a plant, a small human race. Two crystal clear teardrops slid down Manchurley's cheeks, and Manchurley held them in her hands and sprinkled them on Belmel. After only two breaths, Belmel's body recovered. Healing fruit. Dr. Kuleha said with a smile, it's really a remarkable ability. Snapped. Next to the wall in the distance, a civet cat. No, a reindeer hides its head in the wall, and its body is exposed. Chopper. Come here, they are my friends, they are good people. Belmel waved towards the reindeer. Hey, Bel, Belmel, are you cured of your illness? Chopper looked at Belmel who had recovered from his health, and was very surprised. Yes, it is the, healing fruit, that can cure all diseases and injuries. Of course, Dr. Chopper's care these days is also very important. Chopper is a very amazing doctor. I, I, I won't be happy, even if you praise me so much, I won't be happy. Looking at the shy Chopper, Dylan had a weird look on his face. Human fruit phantom beast species personal form. Chapter 22 carry out your justice. This is my assistant, the reindeer who ate the human fruit, Tony Tony Chopper. Sensing Dylan's gaze, Chopper hid himself in reverse again. Quote dot 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 quote. Members of the Straw Hats. Dylan glanced at Chopper meaningfully, then stood up and said to Belmel, let's go back to G5. Before going out, Dylan said to Dr. Kerha, in the future, you can ask me a request that does not violate the principle of justice as the consultation fee for this medical treatment. Comma. After Dylan and Belmel left, Dr. Kerha looked at the direction they were going away and sighed. Madam Doriel. Chopper looked at Dr. Kerha, who looked a little serious, with confusion in his eyes. What a shame, Chopper. Dr. Kerha knelt down and touched Chopper's head. What? Dr. Kerha smiled wryly. It seems that I didn't get his friendship, this promise. Looking at the Sakura flower pirate flag fluttering outside the window, Dr. Kerha sighed softly in his heart. I hope this promise can protect you once in the future. Belle followed Dylan on the mountain road, her cigarettes back in her hand as she regained her health. Dylan, Dr. Kerha and Chopper shouldn't be bad guys, why? Dylan carried Shira on his back and walked in the snow, and the little people sat on his and Belmel's shoulders. It's true that they can't be called bad people, but fate will eventually make us part ways, this feeling. Dylan stopped his footsteps in the snow and looked sideways at Belmel, you will understand in the future. What? Dylan Lando, these words about fate are often said by the patriarch and the great elder. Manchwaley, who was sitting on Dylan's shoulder, looked at Dylan's side face, and she thought of the very old elder under Greenbit. He always stood in front of that strange stone, talking about, promise, and, fate. Really? Dylan turned his head and smiled, and asked Manchwaley, so does Princess Manchwaley believe in fate? Okay. Manchwaley nodded affirmatively. I believe that it was fate that brought Dylan Lando to Doris Rosa and Green Bit. Well, that's really good. By the way, Dylan, I also heard Dr. Kerha talk about the story of Chopper, that man named Harulik. Bell Mel. Dylan laughed as he walked, it is undeniable that that fellow Shiruluk did shine in the last moments of his life, but, this brilliance of humanity, can cover up the brilliance he once had. Is it the fact of robbers? Bell's body froze, he hadn't said anything yet, he. Dylan ignored the surprised Bell, but continued to walk forward. Some people have been villains all their lives, and in the end they only did one trivial good deed, and they were praised by the world. Some people insisted on justice all their lives, but he did one wrong thing and was cast aside by all people. People are always ignorant, I don't expect much from most people, but Bel Mel. I think you should use your own judgment, because you are a soldier. Since meeting Dylan, Belmel has rarely heard him speak to himself in such a serious tone. These words also greatly impacted Belmire. Some monks warned the world, 
put down the butcher's knife and become a Buddha immediately. I don't quite agree with it. If every villain puts down the butcher's knife at the last moment, does it mean that his past sins can be written off? It's not fair, nor is it reasonable. Of course, people's hearts are inherently unpredictable. Perhaps one day in the future, Bel Mel, you will also see me killing someone who you think is not guilty of death or even completely innocent for no reason. Man, when that time comes, Belmel, how do you choose? Belmel in the snow frowned. Ten years ago in the Oit Kingdom in East Blue, she personally participated in the battle with the pirates. The battle was extremely tragic and she was seriously injured. That's where Nami and Nokigao were picked up. In Kokoyasi village, she witnessed Arlong's brutality, and even she almost lost her life. In the land of West Blue Flowers, she saw what life is like for people without power in a country that lives on plunder. East Blue compared to other sea areas and great roots. Already too happy. Advertisement. During the two months of training in the headquarters, she also learned that, apart from the limitation of the route, the biggest contributors to all this are the heroes of Marine, Vice Admiral Garp and the man in front of her. The name, the weakest sea, is just a joke among pirates. But it is a very lucky thing for the people. The whistling wind and snow brushed over Belle Belle's pink hair. In the wind and snow, the figure of the man in front did not show any hesitation or hesitation. But so lonely. Bell clenched his fists. No. It shouldn't be like this, it shouldn't be like this. In an instant, a huge coercion erupted from Bell Mel's body, facing the howling wind and snow, almost forming an evenly matched hedge. Dylan, who was walking in front, paused and looked back at Belmel, who was surrounded by a black thunder-like momentum. Quote question mark quote. Dylan. Bell Meyer's eyes became firm, and his momentum kept rising. I, will not hesitate anymore. In the castle on the top of the mountain, Dr. Kuleha looked at the black thunder in the mountains and sighed. Really, one and two are like monsters. D. Tinder, you guys are having a hard time. As soon as Dylan and his party walked out of the mountain, a group of soldiers surrounded them. According to the king's decree, anyone who does not come to the drum kingdom to seek medical treatment, you have violated the laws of this country. The guard looked at Dylan, who was tall and god tier and cold, and then at Belmel, who was next to her. So, so you're all going to be executed. Moo ha ha ha, a fat man in a white bear hooded cape stood behind the guards. King of the drum kingdom, Wapple. The moment he saw Wapple, Belmel's expression turned cold. During the month of recuperating in the castle, she heard many rumors about this man. The chief culprit who made this country, sick, was this hideous man in front of him. Dylan raised his hand, and the guards tensed. Do it. Dylan opened the sleeve, revealing the phone bug inside. Come to work, help me find a fruit, munch munch fruit. In the phone bug, the image of CP0 wearing a mask showed a puzzled look, munch munch fruit. Hasn't it been eaten by someone? Yes, but I heard that once the eater dies, the fruit will reappear somewhere in the world. Is that right? Quote dot 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 quote. The drum kingdom is a member country of the world government. CP0 should not care about these. The problem is that you are not CP0. You're Marine, B asterisk 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 D. Find the excuse for the aftermath by yourself, and find the fruit as soon as possible. Well, I will exchange some information about the Revolutionary Army with you at that time, and that's it. That's it. What do you mean? Wait, intelligence from the Revolutionary Army. CP0 looked at the phone bug who had closed his eyes and fell into deep thought. Drum Kingdom. Let him go. After disconnecting the phone bug, Dylan turned to look at Belmel. Go ahead and implement your, justice. Belmel stood next to Dylan and listened to his conversation with CP0 the entire time. Hearing Dylan's words at this time, Belmire raised his eyebrows, and his body disappeared in place. Chapter 23 The King's Evil. Looking at Wapple who completely lost his vital signs on the ground. The guards and the citizens in the distance were stunned for a moment, and then burst into appalling cheers. Wapple is dead. Our demons are over. Dylan walked towards the guards. Where is Dalton? Where is it locked? The leading guard swallowed. The woman seemed to be just his subordinate. In prison. Take me there. Dylan looked around. The country was going to be attacked by Teach in a few years. Dalton. Dylan shook his head. Dalton was actually not a good choice. That guy was too kind. Whether as a warrior or a king, kindness is not an excellent quality. After all, this is the era of great pirates, and this is another great shipping route. Came to the dark prison, Dalton was imprisoned at the bottom. Let him out. Yes. Facing this man's order, the guards did not dare to hesitate at all, and Dalton himself was innocent and deeply loved by them. The burly Dalton looked at the man outside the prison strangely. You are. It doesn't matter who I am. What matters is who you are. Who do you want to be? Okay. Dalton was a little confused for a while. Not only kind, but also a little dull, Dylan shook his head again inwardly. Captain Dalton. King. No. Wapple has been executed. Dalton looked at Dylan gravely. Although he was imprisoned here, he still believed in the rule of this country. After following Dylan out of the prison gate, Dalton finally couldn't help asking. You. I have no interest in this kind of broken country. To be honest, I can kill Wapple and leave. I have also said hello to world government, and this has no effect on me. I found you because you are barely me. People I know in this country. The wind and snow were howling outside the door, and two tall men stood facing the wind and snow. Dalton, you know, if I just walk away, what will the future of this country be like? 
I don't know. Dalton replied after thinking for a while. No, you know. Dylan looked at the snow in the sky. If I just walk away, then the fate of this country will justifiably fall into the hands of celestial dragons. You people. Dylan shook his head. You're always asking for mercy and favors from others. To be honest, I don't like it. These words were already close to the sensitive point, and Dalton remained silent without answering. You're actually not much better than Wapple. Dalton was a little surprised and didn't understand why the man said that. Dylan chuckled. Wapple's evil lies in his greed, corruption and depravity. Your evil lies in incompetence and hypocrisy. The word, hypocrisy, hit Dalton's heart like a heavy hammer. Kindness is a noble quality for a people, but not for a king. Both things are deadly. Work hard, Dalton, I know that the people here love you, so I will give you a chance, I hope you can seize it. Dylan patted the snowflake on his shoulder and walked forward. If you can't become strong, face the crisis with your own strength, and can't use your strength to fight the enemy. This country, is really hopeless. Dalton, the former captain of the Drum Kingdom Guard, and a man with the ability of Niu Niu Fruit. With the election of the people and the acquiescence of the world government, he successfully became the king of the Magnetic Drum Kingdom and renamed the country, Sakura Flower Kingdom. Sakula, naive and silly name. Maria Joy. CP0 left after reporting the situation in the Drum Kingdom. The five elders still pose enigmatically. Advertisement. The Drum Kingdom. No. It's called the Sakura Flower Kingdom now. Adams Dylan, do you take action against the regime? It seems that Wapple provoked first. His original purpose was to go to Drum Island to heal his subordinates. That being said, but as a marine, the blonde five elders crossed his fingers and crossed his legs, he has obtained the power of the little people, which shows that Lord, I am, S. Guidance is correct. He is the enemy of, Lamp, and the rights of the mere kingdom do not need to be considered. Good. Five elders holding a long knife seconded. For hundreds of years, those ancient families and races refused to belong to the world government, and some guys even preferred to be isolated from the world and wait for the return of, Fire. Adams Dillon achieved unprecedented achievement, we should not hold him back at this time. Seconded. Seconded. G5 branch, half a year after returning from Magnetic Drum Island. TCH, Heavenly Yaksha. Guy, did you complain to the headquarters again? Belmel put his cigarette in his mouth and threw the phone bug aside. That guy is doing underground business. I heard that the business is very broad, including arms, devil fruit, human trafficking, and even directly dispatching cadres to participate in the power struggle. Dylan covered his face with a newspaper, ignoring the small talk of his subordinates. I don't know why these guys like to chat in his office. Didn't I arrange an office for you? In the past six months, G5 has gradually started, hunting. Although it was limited to the vicinity of the branch, it also had a huge impact on the surrounding pirates. That man was the guy who defeated the, Red Hair Pirates, by himself, Marine Vice Admiral, Dark Dragon, Dylan. And he also has a demon-like killer under his command Shiryu of the Rain. After a period of, hunting, many pirates no longer choose this route. The business of, Joker, has also been seriously affected. After all, it's okay to meet that pink-haired woman, at most it will be offline for a while. If you meet Shiryu, you can delete the number directly. During the, hunt, it's not that no one thought about setting fire to kill Belmire. But when they think of, red hair pirates, most people still choose to run away. It only took a few hours to get from, New World, to West Blue, and then nearly broke the red hair pirate's ship, and the number three was killed in person. Listening to his subordinates babbling about how bored they are lately, Dylan peeled off the newspaper on his face. Go West Blue. After returning to the G5 branch half a year ago, Dylan took the time to return to East Blue and took back all the stolen money he had accumulated over the years. I have to say that it is good to have a space ring. Inside the huge castle, his collections were neatly arranged. The highest ones are the two devil fruits whose owners have not yet been chosen. And the purpose of going to the Kingdom of Flowers this time is to eliminate the, eight treasure water army. By the way, see what the hell is going on in, the big glacier, and why the red-haired guy goes against his usual style and shoots at Marine. And, the treasure in the ice continent. Is it reasonable for me, as Marine, to confiscate the stolen money of the pirates? Tom, take care of your home and protect Mancherly. Leave it to me who is famous. Tom laughed. Dylan is still very relieved about Tom's strength. At this stage, apart from the four emperors, three emperors and their lieutenants, few people should be able to defeat Tom directly. Of course, those bastards who hide, such as Golden Lion or something, are not excluded. Vice Admiral, we can't fly, from here to the land of flowers. Everyone looked weird. Although the G5 ship is standard for Marine, it may not be possible to get there from the, New World, to the Land of Flowers within two or three months. Ship. Dylan stroked his chin, looking at Tom who was teasing Sherry Man in the base. The world's number one shipbuilder, is under his command, but unfortunately, there are no good materials now. Where the FK did you get all those Adam's trees? Why don't you let CP0 do it for yourself, or Brother Ming? Ant. Hum. Let's talk about it when we get the Munch Munch fruit. Regarding his own car, Dylan already has a plan, and he is not in a hurry at the moment, after all, there are still a few years before the, big event, breaks out. Chapter 24 The Great Glacier In the end, the group boarded the CP0 exclusive ship. 
It seems that he gets along with Aokiji a lot, and Dylan also likes to lie on the sun lounger and bask in the sun. I said, why are you always wandering around, aren't you investigating me? Looking at the familiar masked man, Dylan asked through the newspaper. CP0 sat cross-legged on the bow, it's normal to investigate you. The CP organization itself is responsible for monitoring the movement of the entire sea, and Marine is of course included. TCH, UB asterisk 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 D, what should I say next? Cases that your Marines can't solve, my CP will solve, and people your Marines can't kill, I'll kill with CP. In a word, if the Marine can handle it, I'll handle it if not, I have to take care of it. Imperial Power Franchise, cut first and play later, this, it is CP. Just think about it, the area I'm in charge of itself is the front section of, New World. However, the target of the recent investigation is not you. In fact, the investigation of Dylan has already been taken over by other members, and the main task he is currently receiving is actually to meet Dylan's needs. This sounds ridiculous. After all, CP is rated with Marine in terms of grades, but as CP0, it is higher than Marine in a sense, not to mention that Dylan is only Vice Admiral. But that's what he was ordered to do. Due to the good qualities cultivated by the CP organization since he was a child, he did not and did not dare to doubt too much. Your ship seems to be very special, the power system. Sensing the speed of the CP ship, Dylan, listened, and questioned CP0. Technology provided by Vegapunk. Is it really that guy? Vegapunk, apart from his superior IQ, where does his background come from? But speaking of it, why has CP become more and more talkative recently? There is no such thing as, you have no right to directly transfer CP members, from BB. Five elders, or, M. He has gone to the, country of flowers. New world, red hair pirates. Shanks stared at the blurry phone bug, for what purpose? I don't know for the time being. According to our speculation, it was because your unusual reaction last time caught his attention. Shanks smiled wryly. Not only did he lose Yusop, but the, guide, in the big glacier would also be in danger of being exposed. The phone bug on the opposite side fell silent, as if waiting for Shanks' decision. Hidden. If his goal is only the eight treasures navy or their wealth, then it can be completely discarded. But if he investigates deeply, this alone may not be enough. Then, judgment based on the actual situation, once he touches, there, he will not hesitate to lose some flags, to lure him away. Understood. After speaking, the phone bug closed his eyes. Shanks looked in the direction of West Blue, his right hand covering his left chest. Last time at the border of the Kingdom of Flowers, he took most of the injuries of, Kui Niu, and he still has a dull pain in his left chest. Dark Dragon, why did a man like you become our enemy? The Country of Flowers, Dylan stepped on the ground. Belmal and Shiryu followed closely behind. Aren't you going back, what are you doing with me all day? Dylan looked at CP0 next to him holding the mask. Quote dot 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 quote. Why do you think I want to follow you? Were it not for the orders of the five elders? The Kingdom of Flowers seems to be involved in some strange incidents. The higher ups know that I'm with you, so let's drop by to investigate. Sneaky, don't hold me back. Also, don't think about it, or I will kill you even if you are a partner. Quote dot 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 quote. From the border all the way to the continent of ice, those bandit groups that originally gathered in the mountains and forests in the Kingdom of Flowers seem to have disappeared. The itinerary has been mastered. Dylan touched his chin and looked at CP0. It seems that your workability needs to be improved. In this regard, CP0 can only pretend to be deaf and dumb. Well, espionage work itself is like this, there is me and you, and you and me. However, this itinerary was personally arranged by himself, and it was leaked so thoroughly. Is something wrong inside CP0, or G5? CP0 leans more towards the latter. Right, it must be so. A treasure navy, tisk. Dylan carried Shira on his shoulders, but he didn't care too much. After all, the head of Qingzhou was smashed by Garp. It can be said that he has made no progress in the past 30 years, and he is no longer a threat. The only thing to watch out for is whether the fate of the world will correct itself. Dylan himself is also very contradictory. On the one hand, he does not want to be directly hostile to the straw hats in the future, so in many ways he is interfering with the future trajectory of the straw hats. Bell Mel, Tom, the regime of Magnetic Drum Island, even the little people of Dressrosa and the current Eight Treasures Navy. These are people who will be part of the future, Straw Hat Grand Fleet, or have a direct relationship with its core members. But on the other hand, out of some hidden hope, he vaguely expects the Straw Hat to grow up. The two thoughts collided with each other, but most of the time, Dylan was still following his own will. This world doesn't need pirates. At least you don't need pirates to save you. The Continent of Ice has arrived. Shiryu still maintains the dressing habit when he was in Impel Down, but the button is replaced with a special, G5, lettering. The last time he was around here, he slashed Lucky Lu with a single knife, but was then seriously injured by the redhead slash. If it weren't for the strong vitality support of the, Ashura fruit, Shiryu might have died on the spot. But, advertisement, Shiryu's hand is on the scabbard of, Thunderstorm. It was also because of that battle that he faintly felt something different. Blood of Ashura, challenge the strong, Shiryu stood behind Dylan, looking at the man who was shorter than himself. While I am strong, I feel more and more distance from him. 
This distance is different from the intense sense of crisis when facing red hair, and it is another completely different feeling. If I had to describe it, I fell into boundless darkness and nothingness, and I couldn't struggle. Go break it open. Dylan's voice interrupted Shiryu's thoughts. Under the ice continent, countless dazzling treasures are shining brightly. Break open. Bell was the first to question. The ice layer is at least tens of meters thick, right? What do you use to break it open? Use your head. Shiryu steps up past Belmal to draw, thunderstorm. After measuring the thickness of the ice, Shiryu jumped up from the ice. In midair, Shiryu held, thunderstorm, with both hands and slashed towards the ice. The moment the huge cyan slash hit the ice surface, a large piece of crushed ice and fog was raised. When the scene calmed down, everyone looked towards the position of the slash. Quote question mark quote. Only so much power. A ravine about 10 meters deep appeared in front of everyone. Bell turned to look at Shiryu. With this guy's strength, it shouldn't be. There is a problem with this ice layer. Shiryu withdrew Thunderstorm, as if he didn't intend to make another shot. Dylan stepped forward and tapped the ice. Indeed, there is no such thing as global warming here. The ice layer of the ice continent has gone through countless years, and it is already comparable to metal in terms of hardness. After thinking for a moment Dylan turned back. Hey, do you want to go? Of course not. Dylan covered armament hockey with his right hand and said to Bell Mel, this is your practice project during this period, the advanced use of armed colors, internal destruction. Okay. Before everyone could understand, Dylan's right hand was inserted into the ice like tofu, and with the infusion of power, the originally natural ice surface began to make a, click, sound. Drink. With a loud shout, the entire ice bed seemed to be torn apart by a big hand, and an abyss more than 10 meters wide extended from where Dylan was. Is this a monster? Belmal muttered to himself. How do you talk? Dylan stood up, clapped his hands and pouted his mouth backwards, I'll leave the rest to you. Not only Belmal, but even Shiryu and CP0 looked at Dylan. If it is really like what he said, this is just an advanced use of armed colors, then. Dylan took out a blanket from the ring and sat on the ground looking at the three with burning eyes. Actually, it's not entirely true to say that. Each power is very powerful when used in ultimate, and their specific functions are also different, so there is no distinction between high and low. For example, armed colors, the normal usage is hardening, winding, outwardly and with this, we become internally disrupted. Internal destruction is just a more detailed grasp of the power of armament hockey, which does not mean it is more advanced. For example, even if Bell Mel has mastered this power, he is still not an opponent when facing Tom's armed hardened cover. Hey, don't say such hurtful things casually, okay. Bell Mel protested loudly. Of course, under the same strength, the destructive power of this force is very impressive. Dylan glanced at Belmel. Tangle hockey to attack me, and feel it. Then you have to be careful. Bell pressed his joints excitedly, and the armed color was instantly covered. Tempest kick Joe Duan. Just when Belmel's heel was about to touch Dylan, Dylan raised his hand and hockey flowed. Boom. In the snow in the distance, Belmel looked bewildered. He obviously didn't move to attack. Shiryu and CP0 next to him were also surprised. They only saw the moment when Bell's heel touched Dylan's palm, as if encountering some kind of rebound, and then flew out. Bounce is just a form of expression. The real power lies in its destructive power. The first thing you have to do is to make hockey flow. Belmel, who returned to Dylan, raised his hand in doubt. Flow. Flow. Armed color covering, dissipating. Cover, dissipate. Damn, how could this kind of thing flow? Boom. With a loud sound, Belmel hit the ice with a fist. On the bearskin rocking chair next to him, Dylan said while shaking, your strength threshold limits you and you are destined not to be a monster like Tom, so you have to spend more time on skills. It is not very wise to rely purely on brute force. S choice. Dylan shook his head, looking at the three people who were confused on the ice field. Shiryu and CP0 are also trying to master this power. Three pairs of curious eyes looked at him. Dylan stretched out his hand to meet the snowflakes falling in the sky. When the snowflakes were about to fall into his palm, they seemed to encounter resistance and bounced off his palm one after another. Flow. Think about it. What is flow? Rivers, blood, and breeze are all flows, so how should hockey flow? Belmal looked at Dylan's palm thoughtfully, and Shiryu and CP0 also seemed to gain something. Dylan lay down again, enjoying the sun on the ice. Chapter 25 Armed Color I succeeded. When the sun was setting, there was a cheer. Bell's palms were facing upwards, and the snowflakes falling from the sky slid to both sides the moment they touched his palms. Not far away, Shiryu opened his mouth in disbelief. Among the three, is she really the one who mastered it first? Seeing Dylan lying on the rocking chair unmoved, Shiryu was shocked in his heart. Not only is that man's own strength bottomless, but even. You don't call it success, it should be called entry. Dylan's lazy voice came. What, shouldn't you be encouraged at this time? Are you infected by Kuzan? Dylan turned his body to the side. When you can break through this ice and get the treasure inside, you can hardly count yourself proficient in using the armed color. How can? Bell just wanted to refute, but the huge abyss in front of him was winding away with no end in sight. Damn it. Bell stomped his foot. Obviously everyone is human. Will this guy be able to practice cultivation from birth? How the hell did it work? Today's Bell Mel is no longer the ordinary marine that East Blue was. 
During the several months of advanced studies in the headquarters and nearly a year in the G5 branch, her vision has become very broad. Same as Shiryu. The more she saw, the more mysterious and powerful she could feel this man. After calming down, Belmal began to think again about how to destroy this exaggeratedly large ice layer. Dylan smiled with his back to them. With the strength of the three of them, it is very difficult to destroy the ice continent just relying on emission. Some extra skills are required, such as the Babao Shuijun's Ba Chong Fist, or Sabo's Dragon Hook Claw, in the future. Somewhere in the world, is it still near the Great Glacier? Yes, his knowledge is very powerful, so we can only know roughly that he is still near the secret treasure of the Eight Treasures Navy. What the hell is that man doing there? Could it be that his strength can't break through the ice continent? After the flow, Dylan looked into three pairs of curious eyes in front of him. In terms of talent alone, except for the level of Pirate Emperor, the three people in front of them are almost all top notch. But they are all missing one very important thing, imagination. Dylan stood up and led the three of them to a huge iceberg. Don't stick to the form. A lot of power comes from scratch. It is very difficult to go from zero to one, but once you have a start, it is easy to extend it. What you lack now, apart from accumulating experience and using it, is the greatest the problem is a lack of imagination. CP0 raised his mask, imagination. Feel my breath. Dylan walked up to the iceberg and put his hands on the ice. Hum, kaka, kaka, boom. A loud noise made Bell and Mel jump. When they regained consciousness, the ice surface that was in contact with Dylan's palm was intact, but there was a huge circular gap in the back of the ice surface. Beyond flow, is it rotation? Dylan rolled his eyes at him. I said don't stick to a certain form. Except for rotation, can't it spread? Can't penetrate? Can't vibrate? Can't impact? Can't condense? The first to realize it was Shiryu, who, after attaching hockey to Thunderstorm, began to control the flow of hockey. Then came CP0. After pouring the hockey into the finger and flowing it, CP0 began to press the finger against the ice. Click. There was a tiny crack in the ice. Belmal looked left and right and then scratched his hair in distress. Did these guys think of a direction that suits them so quickly? Seeing Dylan looking at him with a half smile, Belmel also sat down and began to think. Advertisement. What kind of fighting style suits you? What kind of strength is right for you? It's unbelievable that this man rarely does things that seem purposeless. But Belmel always feels that armed color is not the end. In fact, in the conversation just now, Dylan has basically summarized the usage of emission to them. In addition to the Rasengan that was actually demonstrated, the shock is a power similar to shock fruit. Shock is the core of Babao Saijin's eight punch fist. If you want to destroy the continent of ice, you can achieve it by mastering any of these methods. However, the skills among them cannot be described clearly by words alone. On the ice not far away, Belmel sat down cross legged with his back to the crowd. Dylan pouted at Shiryu and CP0. The two looked at each other and then quietly moved a distance away. Belmel definitely has no shortage of combat experience but it lacks the experience of competing with masters. That's why her fighting eyes were limited by ordinary people's moves. If the ice layer of this level is replaced by Tom. Dylan was just a little sleepy lying on the rocking chair when the ice suddenly trembled. Question mark. Kaka, kaka. In the distance, Belmo's right hand was stuck in the ice, with a serious expression on his face. Drink. Kakaka. The ice layer of the ice continent broke open. Shiryu. I understand everything. CP0. Turn it off, it's boring. Looking at the mountain of treasure beneath the ice, Dylan jumped over the edge of the chasm. Just let them take away the wealth accumulated by the eight treasures navy for generations. Chief. The green pepper that had been hammered to the ground by Garp looked at the size of the cracked ice, Lu Chen was silent. Others did not continue to ask. After all, the man came in person, and they didn't even have the courage to face him. After receiving the notice, the eight treasures navy withdrew from the surrounding area overnight. Although the Kingdom of Flowers is also one of the member countries of the world government, its regime has kept bandit groups like the Eight Treasure Navy, all year round to plunder everywhere. Therefore, although the Kingdom of Flowers is a big West Blue country, its diplomacy is very weak. Raising robbers can be done, but it can't be said. Therefore, the royal family of Flowers is unable to appeal to the world government, and can only complain to naval headquarters that Dylan crossed the border and enforced the law. When the Marine Inspection Department called Dylan, Dylan turned his head and glanced at the CP0 next to him. Tell the royal family of flowers, don't talk too much, Lousy will go back now and kill all the bastards under their hands. CP0 was silent for a while, as if thinking about how to describe this text, after the phone bug connected, CP0 said to the phone bug, tell them to shut up. After returning to G5 after spending nearly a month, Dylan finally couldn't stand the speed of sailing, where's Lousy's munch munch fruit? CP0 spread his hands to indicate that there is no news. Dylan rolled his eyes and pulled out the phone bug. Ma 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 ma, what a surprise, you will take the initiative to find me. I can't help it, CP can't count on these trash, so I can only trade with you. Dylan stared at the chubby face of the phone bug. Oh, trading, what do you want, brother marine, no, dark dragon, vice admiral. Munch munch fruit, the previous capable user was slaughtered by me more than two months ago, and the CP hasn't found the fruit yet, are you sure? Lin Lin. 
Ma 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 ma. No one dares to guarantee 100% of this kind of thing, but if you find it, what do you plan to exchange for it? What do you want? Don't talk too much, Lin Lin. The two unmasked people with opposite identities chatted like friends, and the CP next to him was taken aback for a while. After the two finished chatting, they glanced at CP0. Whoever finds it first will trade, it's fair. CP0 growled inwardly. Do I mean it? I mean why do you dignified marine and especially vice admiral actually have a deal with one piece, and it looks like it's not the first time. But CP0 still didn't dare to ask this question after all, since Dylan dared to call like this in front of him. At the very least, five elders already knew about it. Or, Dylan doesn't care if the five elders know or not. You can read more daily new novels on fictionzone.net. Both chapter 26 auction. Sabayati Archipelago. Dylan and CP0 walked side by side toward First Avenue. Just finding the news doesn't count as a successful transaction, unless you pay me to take pictures. Quote dot dot dot. This is secretly supported by, Heavenly Yaksha, Doflamingo, I'm afraid. Then keep it accounted for. Half of it. CP0 was silent for a while. This really cannot be regarded as the completion of the transaction, it just provided information. Auction number one. The main business is population auctions, occasionally there will be devil fruit or famous knife auctions. The master behind it is one of the seven warlords of the sea today, King de Reese Rosa, Heavenly Yaksha, Don Quixote Doflamingo. When the two walked to the gate of auction house number one, the expressions of the people around them changed and they retreated. Some guys who didn't know why were dragged aside by their companions before they could react. H.O., you guys' outfit is quite useful, usually Marine doesn't have such a strong deterrent power. CP0 shook his head noncommittally. As one of the senior members of CP0, he certainly knew what he represented in the eyes of others. Only a guy like Adams Dillon who can directly talk to five elders dares to shout at him, and even threatens to kill him at every turn. Palazzo de Reese Rosa, my lord, News came from auction room one of Sabayati Archipelago that CP0 and Dark Dragon have entered the venue. Dark Dragon. Doflamingo's face darkened. This guy, forcibly took Sherryman and other small people away, and let his subordinates wantonly, hunt, around, which caused Doris Rose's business to gradually decline. What are you going to do at auction house number one now? What is today's auction item? Baby Five looked through the records. Well, munch munch fruit. There are five slaves. The Murlocs. Long-handed, long-footed, fur-haired and a famous snake head clan. Are you going for the fruit? or something else. Baby Five asked with a cigarette in his mouth, do you want to inform the auction house? Do not. Doflamingo raised his hand. Don't mess with that B asterisk 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 D, just go about it normally. That B asterisk 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 D, is not a guy with rules. In auction house number one, the auctions for the Murlocs, long-handed clans and foot-long clans have all ended. Next is the right and wrong of the auction, very rare race, fur clan. Fur tribe. Dylan frowned, don't these guys rarely go to sea? No, it's not that there are none, but they are rare anyway. The fur tribe from the mysterious country is full of energy, has great fighting skills, and seems to have some kind of special racial talent. In a huge iron cage, an iron chain as thick as a thumb locked an elegant but blindfolded guy. For some reason, Dylan felt a slight tremor in his heart when he saw this guy. Oh, forgive my offense, but I still have to say, if you want to buy this slave, you'd better have strong strength yourself, otherwise it will be very dangerous. Then, the starting price for this fur man is, 700,000 baileys. Dylan turned his head and glanced at CP0. At this time, CP0 is already a mature fan, and Dylan knows what he should do with just one look. The Fur Clan. Although they are rare, they still outnumber mermaids in number, and this guy looks like a male, so the price has dropped a lot. Are men about to drop in price? CP0 nodded. The value of males is generally much lower. After all, the males of this particular race are generally bought back as playthings. Although some people have such weird hobbies, they are a minority after all. Quote. Punishment. True punishment. Dylan looked at the fur family locked in an iron cage. Although he couldn't see his face, Dylan could still feel a sense of beauty and elegance from him. Wait, am I the one with weird hobbies? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. CP0 couldn't help but feel a little strange when he saw Dylan's expression alternately smiling and then ferocious. Hey, hold your sign. My clothes represent. Then take off your clothes and lift them up, or I'll take them off for you. Quote dot 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 quote. Looking at Dylan with a strange face, CP0 has no doubt that this psychopath can really do such a thing. Oh, VIP number 47 bid 700,000 baileys, is there any higher price? In the end, no one continued to increase the price, and those who could appear in venue 1 basically knew what the clothes represented. Later, when the snake clan was being auctioned off, Dylan just glanced at it and closed his eyes. Advertisement. CP0 breathed a sigh of relief, the snake head clan, the price is not cheap either. Snake was finally bought by a mysterious buyer in the corner. Finally, is today's highlight, devil fruit. Tisk. Dylan smacked his lips impatiently, it was just a paramesha fruit, making it look like a phantom beast. Of course, it cannot be ruled out that this thing is indeed a phantom beast. Such as zone, frog fruit, phantom beast, gluttonous form. It's not impossible, able to swallow everything, a powerful devil fruit that digests everything. 
Munch Munch Fruit. After quoting the price twice, CP0 got the Munch Munch Fruit at a price of 40 million. Others seemed to be under the pressure of CP and rarely forced a price increase. After both Dylan and CP0 arrived at the office of the auction house, the person in charge greeted them with a nod and bow. The strongest shield of celestial dragons, CP0. The youngest marine vice admiral in history, Dark Dragon, Dylan. No matter which one it is, he cannot afford to provoke it. Dylan's consciousness merged into the space ring, took out a bunch of treasures and threw them on the ground. It should be almost there. Enough is enough. The person in charge wiped his sweat. It would be nice if this old man could give money, so who cares if he has enough or not. Even if he doesn't give money today, let alone himself, even the young master has nothing to do. The staff behind led the, handsome, fox up. The person in charge was also a little strange looking at this very quiet fox. It is said that the casualties were not small when he was captured. Where are you from, Zo? Dot 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 dot. Tahir raised his head somewhat unexpectedly, and looked at the man known as the strongest vice admiral under Garp. It is true that I am from Zo, but I have been traveling the sea since I was sixteen. Tahir said to Dylan with a smile. His expression was calm and calm, as if he was not a slave at this moment, but a guest here. Dylan turned and walked towards the door, Tahir and CP0 followed naturally. Looking at Tahir's back, the person in charge suddenly felt a, big loss, feeling in his heart. After boarding the CP0 boat, Dylan lay on his exclusive rocking chair and asked, how could you be caught by those guys with your strength? CP0 is also a little curious. Although his observation hockey is not powerful, he can still sense the extraordinary aura of this man. At that time, I was in a state of injury. Later, I saw that they were chasing after me and let them take me away. Tahir smiled calmly. I have seen and experienced many different lives, and slaves should be one of them. Right. Dylan yawned and waved to Tahir. Then you can experience it elsewhere, just remember to return the ransom money to me. After waiting for a while and seeing that he didn't respond, Dylan asked a little strangely, aren't you leaving? Tahir walked up to Dylan and straightened his face. I have traveled around the world for more than ten years, and I have seen too many joys and sorrows. Last time I went back to Zo, Basa Nuerishi said that we still need to wait for our own opportunity to play. But I don't want to wait any longer, Tahir looked directly into Dylan's eyes, please let me follow you to witness the changes in the world. Me, Dylan frowned. I'm just a mere marine, shouldn't you go to pirates for things like chasing dreams? I remember, you Zo guys always seem to be marines a thief shouldn't be a marine, right? Although I don't know why, but it is also because of the tradition that I want to choose a different path. Tahir's eyes were burning. I don't believe that, the world will be filled with, thieves, the name of the people to change. At this time, Tahir was standing against the wind. Although the facial features on his face still had the characteristics of a fox, the moon-white robe and his soft facial features made Dylan feel a kind of, he is so handsome, he is so beautiful. A feeling of, exclamation mark question mark, you are capable, Tahir seemed a little embarrassed, and shook his head slightly, no. Is it the charm in itself? A man, no, male vixen. Tahir took out a somewhat weird fox mask and put it on. This is a trait I was born with, sorry. When Dylan saw the fox mask, his heart moved. It's not impossible for you to get on my boat, but there are no disabled people on my boat, which shows that you are not, facing Dylan's vulgar language, Tahir was not angry, but only slightly bowed his body. Another point is that when you get on my ship, you need absolute obedience. Although you may not be allowed to join the marine, if you need to one day, then you must obey. Even if one day I want to attack Zo, you can't go back either. Dylan's gaze was threatening, and Tahir stood firm against him. Of course, I have traveled all over the world, and I have also been a soldier. In fact, when I board your warship, it is equivalent to no longer being a member of Zo. Tahir smiled slightly and covered his eyes lost. I don't agree with the, tradition, and, promise, that Zo has guarded for generations. I want to find the, correct, path. When Dylan took Tahir back to G5, even with the mask on, Bell's body shook. The hearts of those ordinary G5 soldiers jumped even more. The ones who were not affected were Tom and Shiryu, and a few of the Dantata tribe didn't seem to feel this, charm. Looking at the delirious, Rogue Marines, Dylan held his forehead and said to Tahir, can't you control your damn, charisma. Tahir owed his body. I'm very sorry, my practice is not enough, I will work hard. At this moment, Bel Mel seems to have returned to the way he was in Kokoyasi village. She walked up to Tahir and leaned forward, practice. I also need it, do you want to go together? Chapter 27 The Rock's Remnant. Mariajoy, Pangu Palace. He got the power of the Fur Clan again. I really look forward to it. He already has such a powerful power before the, lamp, appears. Perhaps, history can come to an end here. In the garden behind the void throne, I am, gazed at the huge, straw hat, in the shadows in the distant room. G5 Branch, Vice Admiral, Zephyr Chief Instructor's training ship was attacked, and the headquarters ordered the nearby marines to provide support. Zephyr, where? Near Punk Hazard Island. Dylan stood up. Call, forget it, I'll go by myself. The middle section of the Grand Line, the alternate section of, Paradise, and, New World. Cough. Zephyr flew out of place, a blood arcing in the air. Hundreds of marine corpses lay around. Damn, you be asterisk 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 d, are you capable? 
Zephyr stared at the huge figure in the distance, fighting back the blood in his throat. A sharp voice sounded in the dust and smoke. Zephyr, you be asterisk 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 d, are you still alive? Wearing a leopard print and leaning on a cane, Miss Bajan looked at Zephyr who was injured and fell to the ground and laughed strangely. Compared to Garp, you are much worse, Zephyr. When seeing Miss Bajin, Zephyr was puzzled for a while, and then seemed to recall some long-term memories. You, you are rocks pirates. Bajin, Kim ha ha ha, remember me. Looks like you're not completely old Zephyr. Weibel, get rid of him. Yes, mom. Edward Weebel raised his long knife and rushed towards Zephyr, but he froze after taking two steps. Miss Ba Jin behind him also showed a surprised look. Boom. A huge thunder light landed two steps ahead of Weibel, if he hadn't stopped in time just now, he would have eaten a full-blown one. In the light of thunder, Dylan walked out with Shira on his shoulders, so it's you. Dark dragon. Dylan. Miss Ba Jin and Zephyr looked at the man in the middle at the same time, only Weibel still didn't know what happened. Dylan ignored Weibel. This guy, although his aura was strong, it wasn't enough to make Dylan nervous. It's the Miss Bajin behind him. Dylan looked at the diminutive Miss Ba Jin, the remnants of the rocks. What? Relying on the reputation of Whitebeard, Lin Lin and Kaido, now you dare to show up again. Kim. Jin ha ha ha, great kid. I heard you killed Rod. Miss Bajin walked up to Wable and looked at Dylan. That kid is just a slave on our ship, Jin ha ha ha. Hum. Dylan groaned, what about you? What is your status on the rocks? Miss Ba Jin looked at the distant sky and smiled mysteriously, me. I'm just an insignificant little person. Let's go. Wable, this guy is not easy to mess with, and, more troublesome guys are coming. Ha, huh, ha, huh, are you leaving? Let's go. Dylan pulled out Shira. Before you leave, you should leave something behind. The dark red slash flew towards Miss Bajan and Wable. Miss Bajan smiled slightly, raised his crutches to resist the speeding slash. The strength is really good, but it's a pity. Before Miss Bajin finished speaking, the slash suddenly separated from the left and right, and went straight to Wable behind her. Woo, mom, I hurt mom, I hurt so much. Miss Ba Jin turned his head to look at Weibel whose right hand was cut off, his face darkened, pick up your hand. Pick up your hand. Feeling the terrifying aura that was getting closer, Miss Ba Jin didn't dare to continue entanglement, took a deep look at Dylan, turned around and left with Weibel. Advertisement. Dylan, why didn't you keep her? Zephyr looked at Miss Ba Jin and Weibel who were going away, his eyes were full of puzzlement. You shouldn't be asking me this question. Buried. Boom. A figure hit the ground, and the gray-haired Garp looked at Zephyr lying on the ground and Marine all over the ground with a serious look on his face. Rocks. Dylan walked over to Zephyr and helped him up, then both stared at Garp with Zephyr. Garp. Zephyr looked at the recruit corpses all over the floor. The, Valley of the Gods, what agreement did you make with, Rocks? Garp clenched his fist, but then his expression changed. Zephyr. Zephyr raised his left arm and shook Garp and interrupted. Forget it, I know there are some incredible people and things involved in this matter, you don't have to tell me. After glancing around, Zephyr said to Dylan, see if there are any survivors. After picking and picking among the crowd, Dylan found the surviving Ain and Bins. Teacher Zephyr, the recruit who woke up saw the scene in front of him and almost passed out again. Ain, Bins, seeing the two remaining freshmen, Zephyr felt guilty. Dylan's eyes skipped over Bins, and paused for a moment on Ain's body. There are still some differences between Ain at this time and seven years later, his face looks very green, and his sea blue hair is tied behind his head instead of falling down. What's wrong? Dylan. Dylan shook his head and looked back, it's okay. Then I glanced at Zephyr, this guy has changed since then, he started to want to destroy all pirates, and formed a gorilla team himself. Ian, is a good seed, but unfortunately, with the twisted Zephyr, he is destined to have limited achievements. Zephyr held his right arm and panted. Ain, do you want to become a stronger warrior? Teacher Zephyr. Ian was a little puzzled. Zephyr laughed at himself, then raised his chin towards Dylan. Go to G5, follow this man. Zephyr. Garp looked at his old comrade in arms. If Zephyr said this, he might have decided not to be the chief instructor anymore. So, what is his plan? I don't need to say more about this guy's name and strength, Aim. If you want to become a great swordsman and a more powerful marine, go ahead and follow him, and. Thinking of his own experience, Zephyr also showed some struggle and regret in his eyes. Maybe it was the right choice for him to make such a choice. His attitude towards pirates is exactly what you expect. The sudden change made Dylan a little confused. He just glanced at Ain and was seen through by the old man Zephyr. Teacher Zephyr, Ian felt a little tangled in his heart, but also looked forward to it. The legend of this man. In addition to being one of the two generations of, patron saints, of, East Blue, this man also has extraordinary means. That Bell Mel Lieutenant Commander, it is said that before returning to the Marine sequence, it was just an ordinary Universal Lieutenant Commander who had been retired for ten years. But after less than half a year, she was able to go to the Kingdom of Flowers alone to exterminate those notorious pirates. There are even rumors that the current Belma Lieutenant Commander already has the strength of a general. Zephyr turned his eyes to look at Dylan. I will leave it to you, I am an incompetent teacher, and Ian's talent should not stop here. Dylan scratched his head, that sounded weird. Marine currently serves as the 3rd Admiral and the 12th Vice Admiral, including, Black Threshold, Hina and, 
Great Resentment, Smoker, all of whom are students of this old man. Garp called him, the man who raised the whole marine. You want to say that, isn't all the pressure on me now? Ian is a woman who is strong at best, but she is only at an upper middle level. I don't know how far I can go. But when Dylan saw the firm look in Ayn's eyes, he could only sigh and said, G5, is different from the ordinary marine base, I hope you are mentally prepared, recruit. Chapter 28 Devil's Triangle See Circle Calendar 1517. Three years have passed since Ayn joined the G5 branch. The G5 branch at this time has become the strongest marine branch under Marineford. The underground business with Doris Rosa is getting harder and harder. Comma. The first half of the Grand Line, Devil's Triangle. Here, is there the weapon I need? Ian looked around in the fog. This kind of fog seems to have a very unique effect. Not only is it difficult for light to penetrate in, but even the perception of color is disturbed to a certain extent. He said, first of all, you need to get the approval of a person here and practice his swordsmanship. If this step is achieved, the weapon should be just a gift. Behind Ain, the tall Shiryu sat cross-legged in the stern. Over the past few years, they have become accustomed to Dylan's behavior. Most of the time, Dylan simply gives orders without telling them the reason. But this time Shiryu was also a little confused. Swordsmanship. In three years, he challenged Dylan three times. Every time Dylan used different methods to defeat him, swordsmanship, physical skill, hockey. He could even sense that Dylan wasn't taking it seriously at all. It looks more like showing them skills and letting them imitate and learn. Shiryu didn't know what Dylan's sword skills were. But it was hard for him to imagine that there would be a swordsmanship master that Dylan could admire so much in this unnamed place. Gecko Moria, that lost dog, it is unlikely, if Moria has the ability to make Dylan look sideways, she will definitely not hide in the devil's triangle like a mouse. A. Flop flop flop, a group of bats flitted overhead, and a huge mouth appeared in the distance. Thriller bark, Shiryu glanced at it indifferently, then lowered his head and wiped, thunderstorm, again. Others might think it was an island, but both Shiryu and Ain knew it was the thriller bark itself. Ain glanced back at Shiryu. So far, this man can be regarded as his half-teacher. Moria, if you play these silly tricks again, I'll sink your ship. He 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 What a bad temper, Shiryu of the rain. Amidst the gloomy and strange laughter, the surrounding bats gathered together and condensed into a tall strange man. What is there to do? Shiryu of the rain, and, broken moon, Ian. Ain might be fine, but Shiryu is strong enough to intimidate Moria. And even if Ain came alone, Moria would not dare to act rashly. The guy in G5. The whole sea knows that he is weak and strong. When the, red hair pirates, injured his subordinates in West Blue, he was held on the surface of the sea and beat him violently, even the number three person was confessed. Ain stood in the mist and watched Moria's tall body, he asked me to find, Samurai. This, he, self-evident. Samurai, he he he, I can. Click. As soon as the handle of, thunderstorm, turned, Shiryu's eyes met him. Dylan said that although you are very weak, you are very good at escaping. I want to see how good your ability to escape is. Moria swallowed. Now the entire sea knows that they're so-called, Seven warlords of the sea, are nothing more than copies of the experience of the G5 branch. Three or four years ago, the unknown, G5 branch non-staff boatman, Tom, who had not even officially joined the marine until now, was able to suppress the, sea man, Jinbei in all directions. That pink-haired woman is always going to calm belts, Amazon Lily, to trouble, Empress, Hancock. Although most of the time they were just fighting each other, not fighting to the death. But according to the description above in the, World Economic News, the woman is now faintly able to suppress Hancock. And the business of, Heavenly Yaksha, is often destroyed inexplicably, but the, murderer, has never been seen. Advertisement. It is said that Doflamingo often loses his temper in the palace, cursing such words as, B asterisk 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 D dragon, bloody slave. Shiryu it is said that two years ago, he went to Krajkan Island. No one knows the result, but Shiryu himself admitted that he lost to Mahawk. As for Crocodile, that guy, after hearing that he saw the, dark dragon, once, he became a little negative and decadent. Is it your turn now? Moria pulled out the huge scissors from behind, and behind him, the, three weird men, were waiting in full force. Although the, dark dragon, has not actually killed Shichibukai so far, they have all heard certain strange rumors. If, dark dragon, is allowed to find a legitimate reason, then he will not be held accountable for killing, Shichibukai. He he he, forget it. Moria looked at the zombie soldiers and the, three weirdos, behind her and seemed to recall something, and then put away the scissors, for samurai, it's in the woods ahead, you can find it yourself. Bar. After Moria turned into a bat and disappeared, the, three weirdos, took a look at Shiryu and Ain and left one after another. Hey, has this guy really challenged Kaido? No. Ain shook his head. He's not afraid of you and me or Dylan Vice Admiral, he's worried about the safety of the, three weird people. Shiryu froze for a moment, then showed disdain, boring. After Moria and the three monsters left, the surrounding zombies and ghosts also left under their control. Ain glanced at the distant woods and looked back at Shiryu with some doubts. Shiryu shook his head. Today, with the help of the, Ashura, fruit, he is particularly sensitive to the aura of the strong. But, the woods didn't have the feeling he expected. 
Despite their doubts, the two walked firmly towards the woods. That man, never went wrong. In the middle of the forest, a zombie wearing a white kimono sat cross-legged. As Ian and Shiryu approached, the zombie looked up at Ian. Has the person chosen by fate appeared? What? Ain was taken aback, full of surprise. Don't worry, it's just the whisper of the undead. The zombie nodded slightly after looking at Ain. Then, tell me the purpose of your coming here. Seeing that the zombies ignored him at all, Shiryu didn't care. He walked not far away and hugged, thunderstorm, and began to close his eyes and meditate. Ian pursed his lips, and finally said, I followed the order and came to learn swordsmanship from a man named, Warrior. Samurai. The zombie's eyes were empty, it's really a long-standing name. Ian looked at the zombie in front of her, and for a moment, she seemed to see a figure soaring into the sky, swinging a knife towards the sky. Then, show off your sword skills. The zombie sat cross-legged and stared at Ain. Swordsmanship. Ain's expression turned serious. Please teach me more. Condemned. Inanimate. A huge slash erupted, and then it fell apart and bombarded the surrounding ground like a scourge. In the castle in the distance, Moria felt the smell and turned to close the window. Wrong. After the slash dissipated, the kimono zombie looked directly at Ain. This move is very strong, but it's not used like this. Quote question mark quote. Ian was a little puzzled, he had already mastered the move of, condemning number life, very well. The zombie stood up and held the handle of the knife with his right hand. I have been dead for hundreds of years. The power, soul and hockey of this body have all dissipated. I can only explain it to you with the, power, of others. The move just now, the correct understanding should be to entangle and mix hockey in it, to gather the slashes together with absolute control, and quickly penetrate the opponent. That's it. Condemned. Inanimate. Laugh. Call out. A crescent-shaped long and narrow slash flew out, piercing through the rocks and cutting off the trees. Fly all the way out of sight. Shiryu next to him squinted his eyes, just relying on swordsmanship, this guy. And Ain's heart was beating wildly. It took me several months of thinking about this trick before I managed to get started. The man in front of me learned it just by looking at it. No, it's not that I learned it, but I surpassed myself in an instant and found the correct usage. Ian believes that this is what the real, conviction of no life, is like. This move, is somewhat similar to the next move, but its, meaning, is different. Meaning, Ain knew that the real teaching had begun. Chapter 29 The Adventures of the Prince Name, didn't he tell you guys? Dylan looked at Ain and Shiryu. Ian shook his head while holding the handle of, Chu Shui, tightly. He said that he is just a ghost of history, so he doesn't need to leave his name. Hum, he's Wanokuni's, sword god, dragon slayer, samurai, Shimotsuki Ryoma. Then this knife, Ian can clearly feel the power of this knife, and even now she is still a little bit unable to control it. It is Wanokuni's, national treasure, the black sword, autumn water, the famous sword that Ryoma once used to cut down the dragon. On the sofa next to him, Shiryu said strangely, you have to be careful, there are only three such knives in the sea at present. If the strength is not enough, even if there is Dylan's deterrence, I am afraid that someone will not be able to resist you because of it. Of. Ain glanced back at Shiryu, who didn't understand the meaning yet. Shiryu played with, thunderstorm, then looked at Chushui, do you know why its blade is black? Doesn't it look familiar? Ian looked at Chu Shui's blade with a dignified expression, is it hockey? Yes, it's armament hockey. Shiryu took a puff of smoke between his cigars, this state can only be achieved by the holder covering with extremely powerful hockey for several years or even decades. On the sea, this kind of knife is generally called, black knife. Shiryu looked at Ain with a half smile, until now, there are three black knives on the sea. Black knives knight, the holder, eagle eye, mahawk, black knives shira, the holders, dark dragon, Dylan, black knife chushui, the owner, broken moon, Ian. Who do you think those guys who are obsessed with swords will attack? Ian was taken aback for a moment. Even though Dylan said it was a, national treasure of Wanokuni, she didn't have much idea in her mind. Only then did she understand the value of what was tied around her waist. Treasure knife. As a swordsman, of course you will not be afraid of fighting. Ian's eyes sank. This is not only the wish of Dylan Vice Admiral, but also the entrustment of Mr. Ryoma. No matter what dangers and challenges, I will cut them off one by one. Dylan ignored her impassioned speech, but asked a little suddenly. Ryoma's swordsmanship should be based on slashing and weak point attacks, right? How did you gain? Ian didn't know how he learned about it, but he was also used to the almost omniscient and omnipotent magic of the whole man. It's very amazing, but I need more battles. This kind of swordsmanship requires constant fighting to find flaws in the enemy and the enemy's moves to improve myself. As that's so, Dylan paused for a moment. He does not object to his subordinates fighting, and even considers that he supports it in some respects. But since Miss Ba Jin suddenly appeared a few years ago and was bumped into by himself and Garp, he disappeared immediately. At that time, Dylan knew that the remnants of the big pirate group must have something unknown, otherwise, with the power of Mariajoy, it would be impossible to let them go. Whether it's the remnants of the rocks, or Roger's crew, some people even live blatantly under the eyes of the public. Such as Rayleigh, Carlos, Buggy. What is it that makes the world government so wary? It is unbelievable to say that the five elders are idiots and let the King Luffy grow from 30 million trash fish to, fifth emperor, Dylan. 
There must be some kind of force holding Mariajoy in check, preventing them from taking a shot easily. It's just that this power has never been exposed positively. Is it the, great kingdom, that used to be, or Joey Poe's will, D's will, drums of liberation, or the will of, Nika? Oh shit, Dylan stood up abruptly, and Ain and Shiryu next to him were taken aback. What the FK grassroots manga, it's not the adventures of the prince in the end. All of them are F asterisk 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 G actors, how can lousy one hit nine? F asterisk 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 G1 and 9, the two crystals in the spring water belong to other people's F asterisk 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 G house. Advertisement. Shiryu had a weird face, and Ain lowered his head slightly. Occasionally, Dylan Vice Admiral will say something that everyone doesn't understand. Just get used to it. Call. Dylan slumped on the sofa and waved his hands, Shiryu and Ain tactfully withdrew. He can make some arrangements in advance by virtue of his memory advantage, but in certain areas, there must be a red line. As long as he crosses or even touches that red line, there will be a force that has never been shown before and will collide with him. For example, Miss Ba Jin, although Dylan is sure to kill her, but as she said, she is probably at most the level of an ordinary crew member in rocks. After all, Kaido, who was a clan of ghosts, back then, was only a trainee crew member. What about rocks himself? What about other cadres? Valley of the Gods. Why was it erased from the map again? Dot 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 dot. The periphery of the G5 base, the shipyard. Hey, Tom, isn't it finished yet? The dock was built between two peaks, in a huge cave filled with various metals. In addition to Tom the boatman, several men in white scientific suits kept taking metal ingots from a furnace for analysis and testing. Belmo walked into the cave with his hands clasped on the back of his head. Not yet, Xiaomei, but the loud metal is almost ready. Tom grabbed a piece of metal and tested it before putting it back in place. Three years ago, after Dylan got the, munch munch fruit, he asked Vegapunk to help him fuse in a small furnace. After a while, when Dylan sent some of the special alloys obtained through the Tun Tun Furnace to the Vegapunk office, Vegapunk showed great interest and expressed his willingness to cooperate with the G5 base. The condition of the cooperation is that the Vegapunk Institute will test and analyze the properties of the metal for Dylan and be responsible for providing the power system for his car. G5 is responsible for providing some rare alloys for Vegapunk to study. Looking at the neatly stacked logs beside the cave, Bell murmured, Treasure Tree Adam. I really don't know where this guy got so many, I heard it's very expensive. After counting the metal ingots, a scientific researcher said to Tom, after calculation, all the materials needed for the Shenlong have been prepared, including the error loss that may occur during the construction. Then, the scientific researcher closed the notebook in his hand. When will it officially start? How long it takes? A voice sounded from the entrance of the cave, Dylan looked at the metal in the room, and felt a sense of accomplishment in his heart. According to calculations, it will take one year and three months, and follow-up testing and improvement will be carried out, and it will be put into use in about one and a half years. For this Dylan Vice Admiral, people in the Institute still like it very much. Firstly, he is very safe here, and secondly, the living and scientific research conditions here are very good. Let's start as soon as possible. Dylan had a rare look of anticipation in his eyes. Dragon, took him a lot of thought. Whether it's Tom, or the superalloy produced by Munch Munch Fruit, and the treasure tree, Adam. Dylan paused when he turned and walked out of the hole, Tom. Huh, Tom looked up at Dylan suspiciously. Dylan looked at chubby Tom's excited face and shook his head, then said with a serious face, it's still the same sentence, strength is the essence. At least for the time being. Seeing Dylan's expression, Tom also solemnly said to Kaido, understood. Chapter 30 Nico Robin. The capital of Alabasta, Albana. Dylan walked aimlessly on the street with Shira on his shoulders. On both sides of the street, some sneaky guys were quietly watching him. Although the behavior of these guys is clear under the perception of, hard web, Dylan has no intention of doing anything to them. These people have their own origins, CP, World Economic News, the major pirate groups, and maybe even Marines intelligence personnel. Ba Lok Work Agency, Lok Dahl looked gloomy. Although the, Dark Dragon, Dylan hadn't troubled him in the past few years, the whole sea was rumored that he completely lost his fighting spirit after seeing him once. Even the world government is asking about it, intentionally or not. Weak people are not worthy of being Shichibukai. What is that B asterisk 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 D doing again? It's not clear yet. Besides us, there are many people from other forces around him who are also watching him. Poof. Lock Doll exhaled a puff of smoke. Understood. Ask someone to withdraw. That B asterisk 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 D is moody, it's best not to provoke him. There was a hint of surprise in the eyes of a woman in a cowboy hat sitting next to Kay Lockadale. Don't look at me like that, Nico Robin. Lock Doll glanced at her. Your knowledge of him comes from newspapers and legends. Only those of us who have actually seen him know how terrible that B asterisk 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 D is. I'm not necessarily happy that you tarnish my reputation in front of women like this, little lizard. Boom. The door flew away, and a young man in black appeared at the door carrying a long knife. Dark dragon. Lockadale gritted his teeth and stared at Dylan. Don't make such a dirty face. Dylan walked to the table and sat down with his feet up on the table. Seeing Dylan's unscrupulous appearance, Clockadar became more and more apprehensive. 
It would be fine if it was that Murloc, or, Broken Moon, Ian, or even Shiryu of the Rain. That way, at most, they would come to practice with him, but now that the real master is here, things may not be that simple. Could it be for, Pluton, too? What are you doing here? K. Lock Dahl asked in a deep voice. Dylan gave him a sideways glance. What are you farting? Lousy is a dignified Marine Vice Admiral, apart from Mariajoy, is there anywhere in the world that I can't go? You. G. Lock Dahl took a breath. This be asterisk 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 d, he never treated these Shichibukai as human beings. The palms of Nico Robin next to him were already sweating. If this man hadn't been preceded by, Hero Garp, his title might not be, the youngest Marine Vice Admiral in history, but, the strongest Marine Vice Admiral in history. Nico Robin. Dylan glanced at the woman next to him who was trembling with nervousness. Nico Robin was shocked. He came to find himself. Is my journey, over here. Okay. Although the sea is vast, I still haven't found anyone who can accept me. Maybe it's not a bad thing to end here. Dylan watched as Nico Robin's expression went from horrified to pathetic to distracted. K. Lock Doll next to him frowned, and he was also struggling in his heart. Whether to rescue or not, Nico Robin is the only person known to be able to interpret the historical text. But if he angers the dark dragon, Dylan, it is unknown whether he can survive. For the first time, Clock Doll felt that the identity of seven warlords of the sea was sometimes useless. Advertisement. She, after hesitating for a moment, Clock Doll opened his mouth to find out what Dylan meant. Shut up. Dylan raised his eyelids and glanced at him. Quote dot 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 quote. You are amazing. You are noble. It's okay if I don't talk. Just when K. Lock Doll felt sorry and Nico Robin calmly prepared to face death, Dylan stood up and walked out the door. When they got to the door, Dylan glanced back at Nico Robin and shook his head. Dark Dragon, Dylan's rise is so fast, except for the Marine executives, few people know that he is still under the command of Admiral, Aokiji. Nico Robin certainly didn't know either. The pirates, perception of him is cruel, ruthless, and defensive. After Dylan left for more than ten minutes, the two broke free from the silence. Do you know that guy? Lock Doll was a little puzzled, did Nico Robin have something to do with, Dark Dragon? If this is the case, then there are not many choices left for yourself. Either let her go free immediately, or confess him as an ancestor. No, Nico Robin shook his head. I've only heard of his name, and this is the first time I've seen him. Locke also saw Nico Robin's expression just now, and that kind of mood cannot be faked. It seems that he is very interested in historical texts and ancient weapons. No wonder, isn't that boatman named Tom in G5? Thinking of this, Locke Dahl was relieved. It's just that he still can't understand some things, such as Dylan's attitude towards Nico Robin and the way he looked at her just now. If I have to say it, I am very disappointed. What are you disappointed about? After walking out of the bar lock agency, Dylan returned to his aimless appearance. There's nothing great about Nico Robin either. The identity of this woman is too sensitive, especially when Tom himself is in G5. If he did anything to her, it would inevitably make Maria Joy suspicious and fearful. Dylan glanced at the scorching sun above his head, and said inexplicably, Hey, you guy, I'm just here to take a look, don't be so nervous, right? Aokiji walked up to Dylan with a serious face, and the two walked side by side. Ohara, is there anyone else alive? I don't know, probably not. Dylan turned his head and glanced at Aokiji. How did I know this kind of thing, how old was I at that time? Aokiji was relieved after being choked by Dylan. I thought you were also a survivor of Ohara, come and see your fellow countrymen. Dylan gave him a blank look, everything was in the eyes. Ah, how can I say that I'm your boss too? Dylan held out his hand. What are you doing? Aokiji looked at him, confused for a moment. Pay wages. Dylan raised his palm. You still know that you are my boss. How long has it been since G5 has not received a salary from the headquarters? As our boss, it is reasonable for you to pay a salary. Aokiji opened his eyes, a little unbelievable. Who in the whole sea doesn't know that the G5 branch is famously rich? Not to mention that you have searched in East Blue for more than 10 years, just the hundreds of years of accumulation of the Eight Treasures Navy. By the way, I heard that you also cooperate with Vegapunk to buy and sell rare alloys. Are they worth more than gold? And. Stop, stop. Dylan interrupted Aokiji with a wave of his hand. Furthermore, Marineford will be my turn to rescue. You be asterisk, 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 D. What is a search? I am a captured spoil. Dylan gave Aokiji a disgusted look. Normally, this guy could never be that poor. After all, he and Spandane's family seem to have some kind of connection and agreement. Both Spandam and his son's control of Buster Call are directly related to Aokiji. But just as Aokiji basically doesn't inquire about his privacy, Dylan doesn't ask about Aokiji much. In this world, as long as there is a guy with some strength, who can have no background and connections. Chapter 31. The Self-Correction of History. East Blue, over the Coco Yaxi village, Dylan opened his, hard net, to sense it. Not there. Falling into the orange orchard, Nuo Chigao was taking care of the orange tree, seeing Dylan falling, Nuo Chigao ran to Dylan in surprise. Brother Dylan, it's growing tall again, Nuo Chigao. Dylan stroked Nuo Chigao's blue hair, and took out some seeds from the ring. These are some seeds I collected on the Great Airway. Oranges. After taking the seeds, Nuo Chigao took Dylan's sleeve and walked towards the wooden house next to him. 
A Jian, a village policeman sitting outside the yard, saw a smile in Dylan's eyes. Dylan Vice Admiral is back, do you want to eat here today? Dylan was hesitating whether to agree or not, Nuo Chigao tugged on his cuff lightly, with an expectant look in his eyes. Okay, thank you for your hard work, Nuo Chigao. Nuo Chigao happily ran into the kitchen, Dylan put Shira aside, and chatted with Ajian under the orange tree next to the yard. Where's Nami? Nami, ran out to measure elsewhere again. Jian rubbed his forehead. Now that Nami is 13 years old, he has no objection to Nami going out to measure and draw Jian. Because all the marines in East Blue know that Nami and Nuo Chigao in Kokoyasi village call, Dark Dragon, Vice Admiral, Brother Dylan. Under this premise, Nami can hitch a ride with Marine wherever she goes. Most of the Marines will also help take care of Nami. I heard that I have already run to the vicinity of Goya Kingdom. Really, I am young and a girl. Although he said so, there was still a smile in Ajian's eyes. Where? Dylan was taken aback, Goa Kingdom. Isn't that the hometown of the Sun God? Uh, seeing Dylan's reaction, Ajian was stunned for a moment, although he was a little puzzled, he still said, the Kingdom of Goya is not very far from here, and it is on a Marine warship. Is it a coincidence, or self-correction of history in the world? Dylan's fist clenched, and there was a hint of cruelty in his eyes. Damn sun god, Lousy is going to kill you now. In the past few years, it's fine to come back alone, or to come back with Bel Mel. Dylan has already developed a certain degree of affection for this peaceful village. He initially decided to save Bel Mel, not only because he didn't want her to perish, but also because he wanted to interfere with the history of the sun god. But over the years, Dylan has developed some family-like affection for the mother-daughter trio at the cabin. Knowing that history is still trying to correct itself now, Dylan's heart rises with evil fire. Slaughter the god of the god of the gods, just finish the flowering. But this kind of thing can only be thought about after all. If Dylan really slaughtered the twelve-year-old sun god without any proof, his seven aunts, eight aunts, uncles and uncles would not say anything. Not to mention the power of darkness, the sun god's grandfather, one punch man, Garp alone may not be able to bear it. Seeing Dylan's mood seemed to become a little strange for a moment, and Ajian was also a little confused. What's wrong with Goa Kingdom? I heard that it is the cleanest and most beautiful country in the world. Let's eat, Jian, brother Dylan. Little Nuo Chigao walked to the door wearing an apron, and greeted the two people in the yard. Huh, orange stew again, Nuo Chigao, stop rambling, this is Aunt May's specialty. Nuo Chigao, I still have something to do, uh. Dylan took out a bunch of books and measuring tools from the ring, these are gifts for Nami, and. Dylan took out some money and put it on the table, ah Jian, tell everyone to deliver the harvest oranges to the square. I'll bring them to G5 to satisfy everyone's hunger. After Jian's lips moved, he finally didn't refuse, turned around and went out to gather the villagers. Looking at Ajian's back, Nuo Chi raised her chin and said to Dylan with a smile, Brother Dylan is always so gentle. Dylan reached out and flicked Nuo Chi Gao's forehead. What are you talking about, you little brat, what do you know about gentleness? Nuo Chi Gao grinned. Brother Dylan saw the big harvest of oranges this year, and everyone couldn't sell them, right? But he didn't directly say that he would help us, so that everyone doesn't have to always be favored by you. Advertisement. Dylan rubbed Nuo Chi Gao's head. It's not like that, Nuo Chi Gao, Bel Mel doesn't come back as often as I do, she misses the oranges from her hometown very much. Nuo Chigao grinned and didn't refute any more, but looked at Dylan with eyes full of intimacy and dependence. When Dylan left amidst the thanks of everyone, Ajian smiled slightly as he watched the light disappear in the distance. What an amazing man, does Ajian think so too? Nuo Chigao asked while washing the dishes. Ajian laughed. I don't think so, that's how the whole world describes him. Huh, the whole world. Nuo Chigao turned her head and looked at Jian. In her understanding, Brother Dylan is a very powerful marine. But how powerful it was, she didn't know. He is the man called the youngest marine vice admiral in history, and even in the future, he may be the strongest marine vice admiral in history. But even then, he's our big brother Dylan, isn't he? Ajian was taken aback for a moment, then smiled all over his face. That's right, because of this, he is an amazing man. After circling in the air, Dylan finally did not go to Goa Kingdom. There is Roger's son there, there is the base of the revolutionary army, and old man Garp is often there. I should not be in contact with too much power now. Nami, standing in the sky and looking into the distance, Dylan sighed and left. Kingdom of Goa, Windmill Village, One Piece. Nami looked at the rubber idiot in front of him, and then at the boy next to him with a tit on his face, Madara. That's right, I'm the man who wants to be the One Piece. Since experiencing the, Arlong incident, Nami hates pirates from the bottom of her heart. What's so good about pirates? Are you going to kill and rob civilians indiscriminately? Luffy froze for a moment, and Ace's expression froze for a moment. Of course not, Luffy raised his arms, being a pirate is because pirates are the most free. Without waiting for Nami to speak, Luffy grinned at Nami. Hey Nami, you will be my navigator. How about it, do you want to be the navigator of One Piece? No, I hate pirates, what? After returning to the G5 base, Dylan felt a little irritable, and Shiryu slipped away as soon as he saw it. Ain and Tahir left after a moment of silence, Tom was still in the dock. In the end, only Shellyman and Belmel dared to come to Dylan's office. Ah, what's the matter? 
Bell Mel sat down beside Dylan carelessly, and Shellyman also looked at Dylan worriedly. Bell, who had just sat down, was overjoyed when he saw the oranges on the table, picked up one and prepared to peel it. It's the oranges in the village. Really? Bell stopped his hand in midair and turned his head to look at Dylan. Is there something going on in the village? I have time to bring you oranges if I have something to do. If something really needs to happen, I'll bring you a Gian's head. Dylan gave Bell an unhappy look. Although Dylan didn't actually throw a tantrum, Belmel heard something unusual. So, are Nami and Nokigo making you angry? Bell asked in a whisper. For these two daughters, Belmel's heart is full of love. It is they who gave themselves the hope and courage to live. Dylan sighed and shook his head. No, they're all fine. It's my own concern. Although usually very rough, but as a woman, Belmel of course does not believe what Dylan said, but since he said so, it is inconvenient for him to ask further. I don't know why, but Bell remembered what he said a few years ago in the wind and snow on Magnetic Drum Island. Fate will eventually make us part ways. Chapter 32 Straighten Your Back. Grand Line, Calm Belt, Amazon Lily Kingdom, Dark Dragon, Boa Hancock stood up from the throne and looked at the female warrior below. Who else? After recalling it for a while, the female soldier said, besides him, the other two are, Broken Moon, Ian Boa Hancock's face darkened, it's that woman again. Every time before, Bell Mel came alone, and every time he came, he disturbed the entire Jew Snake Island. What to say that the monsters of Calm Belt are powerful and very helpful for cultivation? B asterisk 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 D. Boa Hancock gritted his teeth, stood up and walked outside. Outside the Nine Snakes Island, a warship with the words, G5, printed on it is parked at sea. Aim looked serious, and Bell put his hands on the side of the boat and smoked. Empress Boa Hancock. In looked at the angry Boa Hancock with a dignified expression, and the swordsman's intuition made him aware of the danger. Yo, Hancock, long time no see. Bell waved to the opposite boat with a cigarette between his hands. Boa Hancock looked at the man lying on the rocking chair with his face covered with newspapers, feeling furious in his heart. UB asterisk 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 D, what are you doing here at Nine Snakes? Men are here. Don't think Lousy won't hit you if you are a woman. Under the newspaper, a lazy voice sounded, but the man didn't show any intention of getting up, and he didn't even remove the newspaper on his face. Quote dot 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 quote. Boa Hancock's face turned blue and white for a while, but then he seemed to think of something, and said softly, don't you dare to look directly at my face. Dark Dragon. Although I don't quite understand why you came here, but, no matter what I do, I will be forgiven, because I am really, so beautiful. After finishing speaking, Boa Hancock raised his head and flicked the hair beside his ears, and the entire Kuja pirates cheered. Your Majesty, it is so beautiful. Dylan uncovered the newspaper on his face, stood up and looked directly at Boa Hancock. So, you are AP asterisk Psy girl. Seeing Dylan whose expression didn't change at all, Boa Hancock was startled. This man is indeed very powerful, so he won't be unresponsive. But when he saw that the people on the entire, G5, warship didn't react much. The most beautiful woman in the world, seven warlords of the sea, Empress, Boa Hancock's head slowly shot a quote question mark quote. Facing the playful eyes of Dylan and Belmel, the muscles on Boa Hancock's face trembled. Why did these people not respond at all? The dark dragon is strong enough, and the strength of the two women is not bad. Why are those marines able to resist her beauty? Is G5 already so powerful? You like beauty, don't you? Dylan pouted, turned his head slightly and shouted into the cabin. Hey, to here, come out to see God. No, come out to see the most beautiful woman in the world. As soon as Dylan finished speaking, the expressions of the other people on the G5 warship changed. There is anticipation and fear. All hands, including Ains, were trembling slightly. Tread, tap. When the footsteps of clogs sounded from the cabin, the marine on the deck showed a very strange state. Some people struggled to turn their heads away, but they seemed to be bound by some kind of magic and could not break free. Some people's muscles are tense and their heads are sweating. Seeing the marine with different expressions on the G5 ship, Boa Hancock became more and more curious. A figure with animal ears appeared at the door of the cabin, and then she saw a white-haired man wearing a moon-white gown and holding a small folding fan appearing in the sunlight. G.U. Some marines start to go limp at the sight of that figure uncontrollably. Advertisement. Tahir walked to the bow and bowed slightly towards the opposite nine snake pirates. Empress Boa Hancock. I've heard her name for a long time. A light breeze blew through, and both ships fell into dead silence. Dylan was lying on the rocking chair digging his ears, and Ain struggled to hold his breath against this invisible force. Belmel stared at Tahir with a playful smile, not shy away from it. On the ship of the nine snake pirates, everyone's eyes were fixed on Tahir. A feeling of, he is so beautiful rose in everyone's heart, and the more they looked at it, the more confused and fallen they felt. Sigh, who, a burst of coercion swayed, and the members of the Nine Snake Pirates woke up from their indescribable fantasies. But even so, many people couldn't help but secretly looked at Tahir. Boa Hancock stared at the majestic Tahir, as if facing a formidable enemy. Who are you guys? Tahir raised her slender and white arms and folded them together, and saluted her slightly, below is Tahir, the navigator of the G5 branch. He currently has no military rank. Boa Hancock clenched his fist and shouted in his heart. 
You be asterisk 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 d, is this what I'm asking? What? Just now, she was also bewitched by Tahir's charm, for a moment, and fell into fantasy for a short time. If it weren't for the powerful aura and mentality of, conquerors, I'm afraid she would make a fool of herself even more. But even so, now she just wants to go back to the Nine Snake Palace and take a good bath. Dark Dragon, why are you here? Boa Hancock barely resisted Tahir's charm, with the pressure of conquerors, while looking up at Dylan coldly. Put your back straight and talk to Lousy. Dylan frowned and glanced at Boa Hancock. This woman, when talking to others, always unconsciously reveals a kind of arrogance, and likes to raise her head and point her nostrils at others. Boa Hancock's pupils shrank. You. Don't understand Lousy's words. Dylan narrowed his eyes, put his right hand on the handle of Shira's knife and pulled Shira out slightly. Click. Conqueror's hockey, mixed with strong murderous and bloody aura, instantly swallowed up to Tahir's, Charm, and Boa Hancock's Conqueror's coercion. The crew of the Nine Snake Pirates rolled their eyes and fell to the ground under this breath. For the woman Boa Hancock. Dylan's senses are not even as good as those of other Shichibukai, openly resisting and attacking marine generals, which is not helpful in the, summit war, and the impel down riots are also inseparable from her. Dylan slowly pulled Shira out, his eyes were cold, you can try to verify your strength, or your beauty. Belmal and Tahir, who were standing on both sides of Dylan, looked indifferent, and Aim, who was a little further away, was somewhat surprised. Please, please wait, Dark Dragon, Vice Admiral. An old voice rang out on the ship of the Nine Snake Pirates, and Gloriosa, who was on crutches, was the first to wake up from a faint. As the former, emperor, of Amazon Lily's third generation, Gloriosa still has good strength, but under the momentum just now, she still can't hold on. Hancock doesn't disrespect you, she, she's just used to it. Gloriosa looked a little embarrassed. As the guide of Hancock and the former emperor of Amazon Lily, she cannot sit back and watch the majesty of the current emperor be violated. But, compared to this, what is more terrifying is the man in front of him who has long been famous and is the nightmare of most pirates. Unlike the young Hancock, Gloriosa understood in her heart the power this man represented. Snake Princess. Gloriosa looked up at Hancock with difficulty, and at this point she couldn't do much more. It's just that Gloriosa still doesn't understand why this man's attitude towards, Shichibukai, is so different. I heard that the world's number one swordsman, Hakai, Mahak has a close personal relationship with him, and, Tyrant, Shang seems to have been recognized by him. Other people, although the reason is unknown, through intelligence analysis, Gloriosa can clearly feel the maliciousness of the, Dark Dragon, towards them. It's my concubine's disrespect. Boa Hancock glanced at the people on board and the killing intent that didn't dissipate in the end finally backed down. In addition to being a pirate, she is also the Emperor of Amazon Lily. Chapter 33 The Struggle for Supremacy, The Beginning Ruskana Island. This is called the Island of 48 Seasons, and it is a symbolic place where human civilization lost to the power of nature. The warship of G5 is docked by the island. Dylan jumped onto the sand first, followed by Aim, Belmire and Tahir. After looking at the huge island, Dylan nodded. There are indeed a lot of beasts inside. Bell Meyer is a little puzzled. To say that Ain is okay, at present, his strength is indeed lacking. But when she and Tahir faced these large animals, they were basically stress-free. It's just a little bigger kittens and puppies. The goal of the first stage, go inside and survive for a month. Dylan looked at the three who hesitated to speak, with a mysterious smile on his face, and stretched out his hand towards Ain. I will confiscate the autumn water first. Ain took off the autumn water and handed it to Dylan, and then took the ordinary weapon handed over by Marine next to him. After entering, except for Aim, the two of you are not allowed to use armament hockey to fight, and Tahir is not allowed to use the power of lightning. After speaking, Dylan walked into the huge forest first. Are you going to? Belmal walked next to him. If this guy also went in, wouldn't his aura alone be enough to deter those beasts? Dylan put on flip-flops and said as he walked, one of the other tasks is to protect me. If I am attacked by wild animals, your mission will fail. Hey, Aim, left. Roar. A huge ape rushed towards Dylan with the trunk held high. Dylan was unmoved in the slightest, still sitting where he was and concentrating on grilling. Drink. In the distance, Ain rushed directly to Dylan's left side with a half-cut sword in his hand, and armament hockey covered the broken sword. Dylan glanced at Ain as he twirled the roast in his hand. The huge size gap between the two sides made Ain look so small. On the other side, a huge lion was fighting with Belmal. If you waste your energy like this, I'm afraid you won't last for a few days. Dylan picked up the barbecue and smelled it, showing a satisfied expression, and then bit down. After chewing a few mouthfuls, Dylan groaned contentedly, and then continued to say to Belmel, of course you must go all out in battle, but you must also know how to distribute your strength. While causing maximum damage, you must also use the most reasonable save your strength. According to your style of play, if you encounter an opponent who is a little faster or has a little more vitality, you will be exhausted before others are killed by you. Hockey also consumes stamina, which is the same as Devil Fruit's ability to activate. The three people he brought over this time were still lacking in combat. Belmire lacks skill use, Ain Armament Hockey underutilizes, and Tahir relies too much on the power of lightning in the, Moon Lion, form. How can every muscle, every strand of hockey be used effectively? Why so much useless dodging and jumping? Are you here for the dance? Why did you attack his legs? 
Your move just now had a chance to attack its throat. Slashing is not for hitting waves. Every swing has its purpose and meaning. To hear, you are not allowed to use your charm, ability, not even the female monkey. Amazon Lily, Nine Snake Palace, they left. Boa Hancock stood up and asked happily. This past year has been a very difficult year for the entire Amazon Lily team. Advertisement. That man with a bad reputation appeared on Ruskana Island not far away from time to time, so the Nine Snake Pirates didn't dare to go out to plunder. Although Shichibukai's looting is legal, some things seem to be unable to restrain the dragon. G5 warships, I.N. held, autumn water, in her arms and meditated. At this time, she had lost the youthfulness of four years ago. Both temperament and body have made great progress. At present, there is already a shadow of a swordsman. And Tahir was sitting cross-legged on the bow of the boat facing the wind, his pair of cut pupils narrowed slightly. Hey, let me tell you if you don't pay attention, you are a woman anyway. If Ajian sees your virtue, I'm afraid he will marry another girl in the village tomorrow. Dylan took out a cigarette and lit it, then threw another one to Belmel out of habit. Belmel took the cigarette and grinned. Ah, you are so gentle, Dylan, are you worried about my lifelong event? I have Nuauchigao and Nami and that's enough. Dylan gave him a blank look, and didn't dwell on the issue. Some things are just fine. Do you know what level you are now? Dylan let out a puff of smoke and looked into the distance. Is it combat power? Okay. Belmel said after thinking for a while. To be honest, I'm not very clear, but I guess, I'm still not the guy Hancock's opponent. Oh, it seems that you are very clear-headed, and you have not been blinded by the flattery outside. More than a year ago, that guy Morgan speculated in the, World Economic News, that Belmel's strength was enough to suppress the, Empress, Boa Hancock. Although her ability is useless to me, her strength, physical skills, and hockey should all be stronger than mine, and in these years of fighting, I can still feel that she seems to have mastered a very magical strength. Belmeyer continued after hesitating for a while. After all, she is still taking pictures of your reputation, and she has reservations and scruples every time she makes a move. Yes, the cultivation is basically over. Starting this year, the enemies you encounter may not have any scruples about me. Belmeyer's eyes lit up. You mean, are you ready to contact the, New World? Although the position where G5 is stationed is located in, New World, in the past four or five years, Dylan seldom took the initiative to advance forward. This also led to New World's pirate group. Except for, Red Hair Pirates, and, Don Quixote Pirates, almost all other famous players have no contact with G5. After all, the incident where Dylan fought the entire, Red Hair Pirates, alone was there. Of course, occasionally some of the big pirates' vassals are killed by other people in G5, such as Shiryu who is, hunting, outside. But there are no well-known players. Dylan shook off the newspaper in his hands, and the bounty offer from, Redhead, Shanks dominated the headlines. The fourth emperor of the sea is born, and the struggle for hegemony officially begins. Quote. The moment Bell saw the title, his breath stopped. The, Red Hair Pirates, although she fought them briefly, was almost instantly knocked out by Usopp. A scary man like Shiryu, although he hit Lackey Lu hard, was also wounded by a blow from the Red Hair. Now a few years have passed, although both she and Shiryu are not what they used to be. But Bell Mel believes that they, who can be called, Sea emperors, are absolutely impossible to stagnate. Even their ascension will be bigger and more obvious. After all, in a sense, I and Shiryu are still living under Dylan's protection. And the opponent is facing bloody fights every day. Thinking of this, Belmol's eyes sank. Then, after going back to rest this time, I will be in a group with Ain and move forward. Go, go to fight, to experience the real life and death, time is running out, you must grasp your, power, as soon as possible. In the past few years, although Bell Mel knew that she had Conqueror's hockey, she almost never released it after the Drum Island incident. Dylan crumpled up the newspaper. Now that the division of forces has been formed, go out and fight. Except for the Celestial Dragons for the time being, no matter who you kill on the sea, I can bear it for you. Chapter 34 To Hears Past Toto Land Charlotte Linlin looked down at Pedro who was subdued and Pokemus who was kneeling beside him begging for mercy. Well, well, you are very courageous, you guy. Tell me, what price are you going to pay? Pokemus was in a hurry when he heard that 100 years of life, Brother Pedro and Jibo may not be able to bear it. Mom, please, for my sake. Shut up, Pokemus. Perospero stopped Pokemus, who was wearing sunglasses. I didn't kill him immediately, it was already taking care of your feelings, do you want to damage the majesty of, all kingdoms? Charlotte Linlin, who was sitting on the huge cake seat, had a frightening light in her eyes, that's right, then dead or. Just as the soul spell was about to be completed, Katakori, who was standing aside, frowned, wait a minute. Mom. Ha. Ah, big mom turned her head, she was very upset when someone interrupted her soul spell. Katakori looked at the past. Mom, I see an incredible future, and a terrible guy is coming soon. Scary guy, except for big mom, everyone else showed incredible expressions. There are only a handful of people in this sea who can be called, scary guys, by Katakori. Who will arrive at Toto Land? Yo, Linlin. Lin. A slender figure stopped in the air, and the marine cloak behind him looked so dazzling. Well, well, it's you, Dark Dragon, Dylan. Is it really okay to appear in? Wang Guo, in a grand manner. The ant raised her head slightly to look at the figure in the sky, 
Since you are here, let's come down and drink tea together. Dylan's body fell slowly. There is no need to drink tea, otherwise I will have no good results if the CP here is sent back. Dylan smiled and looked at the ant. Let's get straight to the point Linlin, -lin, I was entrusted to take these two guys away. Dylan raised his finger to Pedro and Jabot in the field. Although in the few years after the, Battle of the Kingdom of Flowers, the world has rarely heard the news of the, Dark Dragon, taking action, but everyone present still held their breath. No one can underestimate this man. Well, well, are you here for this? Of course, but what are you going to exchange for it? The ant half lied on the chair and watched Dylan. This one. Dylan took out a devil fruit and threw it over, and Ka'er's arm turned into glutinous rice to wrap the fruit. I got it by accident. Paramesha, cream fruit, how? Yes, he can be exempted from the crime of invading Torrent and stealing the, historical text, but. The ant raised her finger and pointed to a guy with slender legs and a chubby body beside him. He hit the cadre who hurt me will have to settle the bill separately. Dylan put away his laziness, and his eyes glowed with thunder. Is this how the account is calculated? Lin Lin, call. Call. Two conquerors hockey collided, and dozens of black thunderbolts suddenly appeared in the air. What? What? He actually has the qualification of a king, and is as imposing as his mother. With the exception of the senior cadre, everyone else began to shake and then fainted during the conqueror's collision between the two. Even though Katakori also possesses conqueror's hockey, he would not dare to directly participate if he releases it at this time. I'm afraid that the two hockey will turn to attack him together in an instant. The wind howled on the cake island, and the invisible coercion slowly tore apart various gourmet buildings. The eyes of Dylan and the ant also began to become fierce, as if they were about to draw their swords at each other in the next second. Please wait, Pedro, who was restrained in the center, shouted. After making eye contact with the ant, Dylan restrained his breath. After the coercion subsided, other people understood why Katakori, who was the head of the, three generals of desserts, was so afraid. After panting for breath, Pedro turned his head and looked at Dylan, who are you entrusted by? Dylan looked at the jaguar imprisoned on the ground by the candy pulp, and said flatly, to hear. Ta, to hear. Not only Pedro, but also Pokemus and Jibo on the side were also taken aback. As that guy, still alive. Dylan is a well-known marine vice admiral, of course Pedro knew him, but he never thought about Tahir, actually chose such a path. No wonder the cat viper boss said that the guy was, dead. Advertisement. Pedro glanced at the man with a bad reputation, then turned to the ant and said, then, use my eyes to pay back. After speaking, Pedro raised his right hand and popped out his claws. Uh, uh, a bloody eyeball appeared in Pedro's palm, and Pedro endured the severe pain and asked, I wonder if it's enough. Big Mom just glanced at Pedro's palm and then looked away to Dylan. At this time, Dylan's eyes were already cold, even if there was no outbreak of Conqueror's coercion, a more palpitating and trembling aura was brewing on him. Well, that's it. Dylan stepped forward and kicked the candies wrapped around Pedro and Japo, lifted them up into the sky. Before leaving, Dylan looked down at Cake Island, but in the end he didn't say anything, just sneered disdainfully. On Cake Island, Katakori looked thoughtfully at the distant Lei Guang in the sky. Looking back at Pokemus with both disappointment and relief on his face, Katakori sighed inwardly. In the air, Dylan glanced at Pedro, who was bleeding from his left eye, and asked, Did you lose your eyeball? Not yet. Not yet. Cover up your armed colors and protect your important parts. The next journey may be a bit exciting. Pedro and Jibo, who were carried by him, were taken aback for a moment, then remembered the rumors about this man, and quickly protected themselves with armed colors. G5 Base. Pedro looked at his fully restored eyes in disbelief. Beside him, Jibo's eyes were full of joy. Brother Pedro, that's great. Tahir sat on the other side, smiling at the two of them. Tahir, Pedro has a complex expression. This childhood friend is full of courage, wisdom and talent. Actually became a marine. Brother Pedro, there is no need to be like this. You and I are all looking for our own, hope and stage. There may be differences in this, but we are still close friends, aren't we? Pedro was silent for a while. Where is the cat viper boss? Tahir smiled wryly. Didn't he say that I'm dead? Having said that, after hesitating for a while, Pedro said, Boss Mao Viper still misses you very much. He often looks at the sea alone on the edge of Zo. Everyone knows that he is waiting for you to go back. Tahir clenched his fist. When he was a teenager, he was the most talented boy in Zo, so he was deeply loved by the shopkeeper Mao Viper. Unlike other fur tribes, Tahir likes to read books very much. From the book, he can always find many different ways of thinking. One day Tahir asked Cat Viper, why Zo's people can't become marine. Cat Viper couldn't give an answer either, and only said, this is Zo's tradition and agreement. There must be a reason, right? Are pirates more noble than marines? Or is it just for the so-called, freedom? Tahir had not seen Roger when he boarded Zo, but Tahir believed that even if he had, he would not be overwhelmed by his fame for no reason like Pedro. It's romantic, but unreasonable. After Zo searched for the answer for three years without success, the young Tahir decided to go to sea alone to find the answer. Although in the world outside the Grand Line, others will regard him as a monster or demon. But he also encountered many things, which made his doubts deeper. Why does Zo have such a, tradition, and, promise? In this world, it is obvious that pirates bring more harm. One Piece, Roger, may be considered a hero, but definitely not a hero. 
Ten years ago, when the grown-up Tahir returned to Zolu, he told the cat shopkeeper what he had seen and heard, and what he got was furious and roaring. When he sought answers from Duke Anuarishi, who he thought was calmer and wiser, the response was silence and alienation. Come back with me, Pedro stared at Tahir, and said in a deep voice, in any case, no matter what path you choose, as you said, aren't we still compatriots and close friends? It is good, Tahir smiled gently and looked at Pedro. Indeed. Chapter 35 Cats and Dogs. Do you really not need me to go? Dylan glanced at Tahir who came to ask him for leave. Tahir bowed slightly. Although I have some differences with the boss of Mao Viper because of the concept, I have been taken care of by him since I was a child, and, after all, this is Zoe's business. Hum. Dylan pondered for a moment before pulling out a piece of paper from the drawer and tearing off a corner. I asked Shiryu to make a life card for you. After one month, if you don't come back to report, I will go to Zoe to find you. It is good. When the three walked out of the G5 base, Pedro took Jivo and bowed to Dylan. Thank you very much. Dylan nodded and said nothing. One month later. Dylan carried Shira out of the office. Are you going alone? Shiryu and Tom got up when they saw Dylan coming out. They are not worried about whether Dylan can face a country alone, but the problem is that the purpose of this trip is not to destroy the country, but to save people. His life card just shrunk and didn't burn. It seems that he was imprisoned. It's not a big problem. I can go alone. New World has also become turbulent recently, and your recent hunting should not be too frequent. Wait until I get back. To understanding, Dylan spread out his palm, and in his palm, a life card the size of a fingernail flew dangling in a certain direction. Zo, Beluga Forest. Tahir was bound by two chains around his feet and imprisoned in a stone hut. Outside the stone house, Pedro sat cross-legged at the door. Tahir, can you really not change your mind? Tahir in the stone house didn't seem to hear it, but just played with the small folding fan in his hand, but his face lost the elegance and calmness of the past. Today is the agreed one-month period, that man is coming. Outside the stone house, Pedro's face flashed with unbearable and struggling. How he wished that he could support and encourage his best friend to pursue his own path and dream like he did when he was a teenager. During the tens of days of guarding here, he wanted to untie the special chains on Tahir more than once and let him pursue his own freedom. But, for some reason this time, the boss of Yamato Anuarishi, the old cat viper, warned him at the same time not to have any other thoughts. Otherwise it will bring Zoe, disaster. What's more, there is that guy next to him. Pedro looked at Sicilian, the musketeer captain sitting cross-legged on the other side. Just as Pedro was struggling with what happened to his best friend, Sicilian on the other side of the stone gate raised his head to the sky. What is that? Inside the stone house, Tahir sighed. Pedro looked up too. In the sky, dense black clouds have completely covered the sky above Zolu, completely covering the huge body of the elephant lord, as if the end is coming. Pedro's pupils shrank, remembering the rumor about a certain man. Outside the Beluga forest, old cat, old dog. Duke Anuarishi and the shopkeeper Momushiba looked at each other, looking at the thunderclouds in the sky. When they imprisoned Tahir, Tahir told them about his January appointment with Dark Dragon, Dylan. So today, a cat and a dog are waiting outside the Beluga forest. A cat and a dog stood against the strong wind, and behind them, the soldiers of the furry principality also waited with solemn faces. Such a big fight. In the clouds, a lazy voice sounded. Then a thunderbolt fell, and Dylan appeared opposite Anuarishi and Momomushi. Where's Tahir? Even following heroes like Whitebeard, Roger, and Odin, and fighting Kaido. At this time, Anuarishi and Momushiru couldn't help feeling a little nervous. After all, they are just ordinary crew members. Although they bear the name of the Red Sheath Nine Heroes in Wanokuni, what they will face at this time is a man with the power of a god and a demon. Inulin stared at Dylan and said in a deep voice, Tahir is a member of Zo, he cannot work for the world government. Reason. Dylan looked around calmly, but he didn't find Tahir or Pedro. This is our tradition of Zo. Cat Viper's fangs were bared, and he, who was originally irritable, couldn't control it anymore. Humans have no right to interfere. It is good. Dylan lowered his eyes. The others showed surprise expressions when they heard this sentence. This person is so easy to talk to. It seems that it is not as described by Pedro and the two bosses. Careful. Inulin and Malmushi shouted loudly, Anuarishi drew out his sword, and Malmushi held up the three-pronged gun. I shouldn't have reasoned with you. Dylan took a breath and moved his eyes. Let me see how good the guys who have followed Whitebeard, Roger and Odin are. Base. Shira unsheathed, and the black-red sword light flew out like a crescent moon. Boom. Although the huge slash was blocked by the cat and dog. But the power mixed inside directly shocked the two of them until they vomited blood. Seeing this, the others popped out their sharp claws one after another, ready to rush forward. Advertisement. Stop. Back off. The cat and dog uttered at the same time. Inulin raised his hand to wipe the bloodline from the corner of his mouth, and said to the others, this kind of battle is not for you to participate in, and the outcome has nothing to do with you. Dylan sneered, looked at Quanlin, the mocking look in his eyes seemed to say, if you say it's irrelevant, is it irrelevant? Anuarishi's breath was stagnant. Although they never left Zo after escaping from Wanukuni, they had also heard the legend of this man. Able to single-handedly defeat the red hair pirates, who are as famous as Whitebeard. The clouds in the sky blocked the sky, and the cat viper shook its nose angrily. 
Damn, if there is a moon. Then give you the moon. With a wave of Dylan's hand, the clouds above split into two, and the moon appeared above everyone's heads. Seeing this situation, not only were everyone not happy, but their hearts became even heavier. Don't care about the, moon lion. This man. After the cat and dog looked at each other, they all looked towards the moon. So far, there is no way out. As the, power of the moon, poured into their bodies, the cat and dog's bodies changed rapidly. Not only did their bodies begin to swell, but even their fur began to grow wildly and turn white. Ready. When the two of them had completely transformed, Dylan smiled. The lion of the moon is ordinary. Although a samurai should not pay so much attention to personal honor and disgrace, but being so underestimated, we will also be angry. The cat and dog roared at the same time, rushing towards Dylan with a surge of lightning. Playing thunder in front of Lousy. Dylan opened his palm forward, then closed it. The lightning that was originally wrapped around the body of the cat and dog disappeared instantly. Taste Lousy's thunder. Dylan raised his eyebrows, and a deafening roar sounded. The originally turbulent thunderclouds in the sky shrank for a while, and then two thunderbolts more than ten meters thick descended. As soon as the hair on the cat and dog stood up, the originally swift castration stopped in the air for an instant. Innocent. The thunder has not yet landed, and with Dylan's thought, it exploded in midair and turned into countless tiny thunder lights, wrapping towards the cats and dogs. Thunderbolt. Seeing the thunder light coming, the two were in midair and could not avoid it. The cat and dog crisscrossed their knives and forks and slashed towards the thunder light. Cut. Cut it for lousy to see. The thunder roared, and large pieces of thunder poured down from the clouds, entangled and mixed with the originally huge thunder column. The thunder that was originally scattered around the thickness of a finger instantly became the thickness of an arm. Give it a try, shocking evil, the thunder and light converged to form a huge ball of light. The cat and dog trembled, even with the blessing of, moon power, they couldn't resist it. Hey, beep, meow, ah, two screams came from the ball of light, and a smell of burnt hair came out. Boom, boom, the thunder light dissipated, a cat and a dog returned to their original state and fell from the air. Ready to fight, seeing the cats and dogs defeated, the musketeers and knights pulled out their weapons one after another. Other fur tribes also began to gather thunder and lightning, and some even started to stare at the moon, ready to transform. Saw, it looks like my, Sura, is going to drink blood today. Dylan grinned, Shira seemed to feel Dylan's killing intent, and trembled accordingly. Dylan, an anxious cry came from inside the white whale forest. With the support of Pedro, Tahir quickly ran towards the battlefield. Seeing Tahir's weak appearance, Dylan raised his eyebrows. I'm fine, it's not that they abused me, it's me. Tahir came to the center of the battlefield and saluted Dylan, then turned and looked at the surrounding compatriots and the fallen cats and dogs. Please give me some time. Dylan lifted his chin, motioning for him to go. Tahir walked up to Nako Mamushi and Anuarishi to help them up. After the cat and dog calmed down, Tahir sat down in front of the cat viper. Duke Anuarishi, the boss of Momomushi. Seeing that the two ignored him, Tahir smiled bitterly. I don't know what promise, Zo, is keeping, and I don't know what kind of, agreement, our clan and history have ever made. Whether it's history or legends, it's the past after all. For me, instead of waiting for some, people, and, things, to save the world, it's better to participate in it myself. Even if it fails in the end, even if I become a sinner in a sense in the end. Then at least I tried, I tried. The Duke and the boss are both men who have followed Roger. Didn't Roger say that, in this sea, the freest people are pirates? The originally silent cat and dog looked at Tahir in shock. How did you know? I was told. Tahir once overheard Dylan saying this when he commented on Roger, and the disdain on Dylan's face at that time is still fresh in his memory. Today, I won't debate whether this sentence is right or wrong with the two bosses, I just ask one question. Tahir raised his head and stared into the eyes of the two. Since pirates are free, why stop others from pursuing their dreams? If so, where does the word, freedom, come from? Chapter 36 Super Rookie Faced with the question from Tahir, the cat and dog were silent at the same time. Yes, if these illusory, promises, and, traditions, are used to hinder the footsteps of young people. So what is, freedom, but the centuries-old tradition of the fur tribe? Since you are determined to work for the world government. An old voice sounded from a distance. Musketeer Captain Sicilian walked out slowly with the help of a wrinkled old man. Grandma Cat. The cat viper's chubby body bounced, and jumped to the side of the old cat that had already curled up into a ball. You. The cat mother-in-law shook her hand to interrupt the cat viper's questioning, and continued to walk slowly towards Tahir with Sicilian's support. We are isolated from the world. For hundreds of years, only a very small number of young people have left. Zo, but they all abide by the, promise, not to work for the world government. To hear, you were different from other people when you were young, but I didn't expect you to embark on such a path. The cat mother-in-law gasped slightly, as if every word she said was quite a burden for her. I give you permission to leave Zo. The cat mother-in-law raised her head, her long and narrow eyes gleaming, but, you have to return the fur clans, token. The token, the cat mother-in-law looked at the child she had grown up with lovingly, sighed, and tremblingly took out a crimson fruit from her bosom. Eat it, cut off everything between you and the fur tribe, everything. Dylan, who was standing behind, frowned. This old cat isn't going to be poisoned, is he? 
If he really let him poison Tahir to death, could he really be killing Zhou? Elephant Lord, this guy. Although I am not afraid, if the Elephant Lord goes crazy because the Fur Clan is exterminated, I may not be able to subdue it. Tahir looked at Granny Cat's eyes. For some reason, he seemed to see a smile and encouragement in Granny Cat's eyes. Mother-in-law, Tahir reached out to take the fruit and looked towards the cat mother-in-law. The cat mother-in-law nodded at him imperceptibly. When the red fruit entered his throat, Tahir's whole body tightened, and then a strange tingling sensation spread all over his body. Dylan in the distance has been watching him, as long as there is something wrong, he will take Tahir away as quickly as possible. As long as he didn't die instantly or be chopped into 17 or 18 pieces, Shui Liman could help him recover. CHH. A hoarse roar came from Tahir's mouth, and the feeling like a burning fire covered his whole body. Dylan stared in the distance. Tahir, the fur on his body is shedding. The expressions of Anuarishi and Malmashru were also full of disbelief, and the faces of the other fur tribes were full of horror. How is this going? Why? Tahir turned into a hairless monkey. When Tahir raised his head again, his animal ears, his fox-like face, and the fluff on his body all disappeared. Grandma Cat. He. You. Cat Viper pointed to Tahir, then tremblingly looked down at Granny Cat. He is no longer a member of the fur tribe, and I have taken back his racial traits and ability to use, electricity. Advertisement. After speaking, Granny Cat turned and left slowly. Wherever he wants to go and whoever he wants to be, let him go. Tahir raised his hand to look, and then looked around. The surprised eyes of his compatriots made him feel anxious. Boss Viper Cat. Cat Viper waved his hand without waiting for him to say it. No need to be like this, since you are no longer a member of the fur tribe, then any, tradition, or, agreement, has nothing to do with you. Of course, your safety is also important. It has nothing to do with Zo. After shaking his beard for a while, the cat viper finally sighed, let's do it for ourselves. To here. After speaking, the cats and dogs left with the support of the musketeers and knights. Others also dispersed. Only Pedro and Japo remained. Brother Pedro. Pedro stepped forward and pressed Tahir's shoulder. Don't blame them, and, have a good trip. Have you figured it out? Dylan looked at Tahir, who became more gentle and restrained in front of him. His appearance has changed a lot, but his breath and demeanor remain the same as before. Tahir spread out his palm, and the original sharp claws disappeared, leaving only slender fingers like bamboo joints. Think about it, the, power of electricity, and the, lion of the moon, have been captured, following you, I cannot lack power. Dylan knocked on the table, staring at Tahir, who was more handsome, whiter and more beautiful than before, even without these two powers, your fighting power is not weak. Tahir shook his head, not enough, I can predict who the enemy will be in the future, and my remaining strength alone cannot become your strength. So, please give me strength, for, new era. Looking at Tahir's soft face, the fox mask on his waist, and the small folding fan next to the mask, Dylan chuckled. Sometimes, I also think that fate is really magical, so magical that it scares me. It even makes me feel like I am being manipulated. Dylan took a devil fruit from the ring. This is one of two op op fruit exchanges from the five elders that year. The first, Ashura fruit, has been given to Shiryu. This fruit, if I'm not mistaken, is almost 100% compatible with you. Tahir was a little puzzled. Although he had read a lot of books, and he had read some devil fruit illustrated books, he had never seen the appearance of this fruit. Yes, zone, canine fruit, phantom beast species, tamamoge form. See circle calendar 1519. H.O., another amazing newcomer, Erlogia. Belmol's habit of gathering and chatting in Dylan's room still hasn't changed, and Dylan can't do anything about it. The power of Logia, that's really powerful, Tom laughed. Hearing the word, Logia, Dylan's chair, which was already shaking, paused. Come yet, Ace. It seems that Shichibukai's invitation was rejected. Really, shouldn't there be only seven people in Shichibukai? Could it be that a weak guy is about to be removed? It should be Moria. Shiryu crossed his legs and pondered for a while. Heavenly Yaksha, and, Sand Crocodile, are also possible. I heard that they are doing some bad things recently. Really, this channel is almost blocked by us, Heavenly Yaksha, Guy, always can find a way to break through the blockade. Tom. Dylan uncovered the newspaper on his face. Find this new guy and try his quality. Don't kill him, he's your old friend's son. Old friend. Tom froze for a moment, trying to remember which old friend had such a powerful descendant. Ah, your old friend, One Piece, Gal D. Roger. Chapter 37. Middle of New World. Flame ring. Boom. A fat body went straight through the flames, grabbed Ace by the collar, and pinned him to the ground. Is that all, newcomer? But, damn, this guy. The crew members of the Spades Pirates showed shocking expressions. Captain Ace, as a Logia-capable user, was defeated so easily. The new world is very dangerous. If you are at your level, you should go back to paradise. A crew member who had been hanging out in New World for a long time seemed to think of something when he looked at Tom, and his voice was distorted. That guy, I remember it, he is, Tom the Boatman, under the command of, Dark Dragon. Legend has it that he can defeat, Seaman Jinbei. Tom sat down with his legs crossed, untied a gourd from his waist, took a gulp himself and tossed the gourd to Ace. Let them back down, I have something to tell you. 
Ace looked up suspiciously. This man, didn't seem to have much malice towards him. Is it the old man's old friend? After nodding to the crew, the crew retreated one after another. Tell me, what's the matter? Tom stared at Ace with a slight smile, but then shook his head again. You're nothing like him. Ace's pupils shrank. He is. Your father, Roger. Seeing Ace's terrified expression, Tom grinned. Don't panic, I didn't come here to arrest you. Tom sighed a long time. I once built the Golden Jackson for your father, but I was convicted and sentenced to death because of it, and was later saved by a certain man. Dark Dragon, Dylan, that's right, he is also from East Blue, and he seems to have known about your existence a long time ago, but he didn't do anything to you. It can be seen that he doesn't have much malice towards you. But Ace, quote. Tom straightened his expression and said very seriously, East Blue is weak enough, the park has Vice Admiral Garp and Roger's crew secretly taking care of you, but start here. Tom raised his finger and pointed to the sea area behind him. There will be a completely lawless area behind, remember, don't reveal your identity. Tom patted him on the shoulder. Dylan told me that in this sea, at present, strength is the only one. I hope you will remember it too. And also, Tom got up and walked out to sea. Ace, next time we meet, we are enemies. His combat skills are barely qualified, but, he relies too much on fruit abilities. Tom was a little puzzled. Although Ace's physical skills were not systematic, he could see that he had good combat experience. Why did he abandon hockey and physical skills and rely on devil fruit so much? As strong as Dylan, the fruit is only a small part of his strength. And Dylan often said to them, hockey is the foundation of all strengths, and it is also the standard that determines the upper limit. Dylan shook his head without answering Tom's doubts. Ace's fate has long been sealed, and even Garp is powerless to reverse it. Perhaps it was because Ace showed his determination to be a pirate when he was very young, so Garp didn't teach him and the sun god himself. Now that you've met him and given him advice, let's end your past with Roger, Tom. Tom nodded. Exactly. When I left, I told him the same thing. I'll go back to the headquarters, those guys won't be able to stay idle, G5 will leave it to you. Dylan stood up, and the number of times he returned to the headquarters in the past two days was also very few. Now that Ace appeared, the headquarters should have responded. Leave it to me who is famous. As for Shiryu and Xiaomei, let them fight to their heart's content. Marineford. Living room. Ah, it's rare for you to come back. Speaking of which, aren't you a Thunderfruit user? It's easy to get from G5 to the headquarters, right? You think everyone has as much free time as you. B asterisk 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 D Kuzan, G5 is the branch of New World. Despite Dylan's teasing, except for Vice Admiral, Akainu and Sengoku looked serious. Sengoku frowned. Dylan, I heard that your, Boatman Tom, went to contact the newcomer. He. Dylan pulled out his cigarette lighter and glanced at Garp who was sitting outside eating a donut. Didn't you guys already know this kind of thing? Don't you, Mr. Garp? Crane Vice Admiral raised his head and looked at Dylan mysteriously. You knew it a long time ago, right? Dylan, you knew it when you were in East Blue. Advertisement. Huh. Dylan exhaled smoke, a little helpless. Yes, yes, I already knew, so what? Dylan spread his hands. Should I just go and kill him? You think highly of me too. Let's not talk about whether I can kill him in East Blue, which seems to be calm but actually has a dark tide. If I really kill him. Quote dot 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 quote. Dylan turned his head towards the seat where Garp was sitting and raised his chin. If old man Garp wants to kill me, who will help? The living room fell into silence for a while, even Akainu didn't speak. So you don't have to look at me like that. Tom and Roger had a relationship. I asked him to see the son of the old man, and I also used this to cut off his entanglement with Roger. Garp slows down on his donuts when it comes to, old man's son. Furthermore, Dylan raised his head. People can't choose their origin, and they shouldn't be convicted because of their origin. I don't agree with that. Call. After taking a puff of smoke, Dylan continued, Marine's descendants may not be good people, such as old man Garp, isn't his son the leader of the revolutionary army. The descendants of One Piece may not be evil people either. Although Ace is still on the road of pirates. But in my justice, before he does evil, he treats everyone equally. Hearing Dylan's words, everyone's eyes gathered. Crane Vice Admiral looked at Dylan with his chin in both hands. Speaking of which, you are now Vice Admiral, and you are a special Vice Admiral, designated by Maria Joy, so you are qualified to set up a plaque. What kind of justice are you going to demonstrate? Dylan. Although it is an unconventional meeting, those gathered here are the absolute main force of Marine's active duty. Even the wounded Zephyr looked at Dylan thoughtfully. In the first few years, he didn't approve of Dylan's style, because he felt that being too bloodthirsty was not what a soldier should have. But after his recruit training ship was attacked four years ago, his heart became more violent than Dylan. The tragic death of students, his wife and children drove Zephyr into a rage and madness. But for now, it's only for pirates. After the, capable person attack, Zephyr's attitude towards Dylan, and even his behavior towards Akainu changed greatly. Pirates deserve to die, Dylan looked curiously at the expressions of the marshal, admiral, chief instructor, and chief staff officer around him. Why are you so serious? It's just a plaque, what can it explain? This is not just a plaque, it will be a way for you as a, marine vice admiral, to express your attitude to other marines in the world. Hey, isn't that right? 
Dylan pointed at Aokiji. What about Kuzan? When he was young, he was, hot-blooded justice. What has he become now? Of course there will be confusion in the pursuit of, justice. We have also experienced this, so we can understand. Crane Vice Admiral glanced around the, young people, present. It's like taking an oath, it's really. Dylan turned his head to look around the crowd, put away his laughing expression. Then, my lords, the justice under me is, peaceful justice. PFF. Puff ha ha ha, it was Garp who laughed first. You guys, you've got a reputation for being brutal in Marine. The others also laughed. Indeed, as Garp said, Dylan and his G5 scare the pirates more than Marineford in some respects. After all, Marineford will not dispatch at will, but G5 is different. Who knows the entire Grand Line, where the main general, Dark Dragon, Dylan is a powerful Marine who can face, red hair pirates, alone. And besides the, Dark Dragon, the other officers are also ridiculously powerful monsters. Shiryu of the Rain, Broken Moon, Ian, Boatman, Tom, Bell Mel. According to rumors, there is another amazing guy in G5, and even those, rogue marines, who have been lawless all year round are terrified when they talk about that guy. In G5, Shiryu, Bell, and Ain like to go hunting. Tom, Boatman, rarely leaves the G5 branch. So even if Dylan is often absent, no one dares to play G5's idea, let alone learn from the G5 people that there is a guy in the base who is more, scary, than Tom. Thinking of this, the surrounding pirates sailed away without looking back. Stop fighting with fighting. In this chaotic era, only by using strength to eliminate evil can we have a chance to welcome peace. Dylan stared at Garp after saying this, their eyes intertwined in the air. Although they have been dubbed, the two generations of patron saints of the East Blue, in fact Dylan believes that he and Garp still have fatal differences. Garp still has a lot of compassion and bondage there. Garp, who is strong enough to suppress Roger, can only silently fight against Mariajoy by playing badly and not getting promoted. And myself, before the storm of history hits, I must be able to accumulate enough power to break the balance, and solve it from heaven to sea at once. Dylan believes that Garp also knows some kind of secret about history and fire, otherwise he would not be working on balancing the power between the pirates and the world government. But this kind of thing, the old and the young looked at each other silently, for some reason, Dylan saw some helplessness in Garp's eyes. There are also some comforts. Chapter 38. Since, red-haired Shanks, became the emperor of the sea, the pirates of New World, seem to be working at the same time under some kind of agreement. Most of the marine and world government forces have been squeezed out of, New World. Except for the G-10th Marine branch and the secret stronghold of the CP organization, other marine base and world government forces have withdrawn from New World. And the second half of the Grand Line, New World, also basically turned into a lawless zone this year. In Marineford's office, Dylan looked at the huge map across his desk. Shichibukai guards the seven routes of, Paradise, and is responsible for cleaning trash fish. The middle section is guarded by naval headquarters, Eni's lobby, and Pell Down. In the second half, it can be regarded as a complete fall at present. Even with the special case of the G5 branch, it is still a drop in the ocean compared to the entire ocean. Above the clouds, countless thunder lights surrounded Dylan's body. He didn't use the elementalization of Lodia's abilities to relieve the strain on his body. The thunder and lightning kept moving and climbing up and down his body, and there were also countless small lightning swimming in every inch of muscle and every blood vessel inside his body. What? The extreme cold at an altitude of tens of thousands of meters made his body tense and excited all the time. The heart in his chest roared like a war drum, and the blood in his veins rushed like a river. Z. Sigh. The moment Dylan opened his eyes, a huge aura of coercion opened from his body. The thunderclouds that could not be seen at first began to dissipate gradually, and then the sky turned into a clear blue. After standing in the air and clenching his fists, Dylan looked down at the vast sea below. Now the sea's restraint on him has basically been lifted, unless he dies himself in a deep sea like the Fishman Island, ordinary sea and sea stone can only suppress his elementalization and ability use at best. As for hockey and stamina, it's almost impossible to be imprisoned anymore. And with Dylan's armed color, even if he is handcuffed by sea stone, he can easily tear it apart with hockey. Speed, strength, hockey, stamina, swordsmanship, and physical skills are all basically completed. As for vitality, I can only give up for the time being. Back in East Blue, Dylan had roughly planned the route and direction. Thunder fruit is also a very important part of it. Enel, although there are elements of plot killing in it, but he himself is not very thorough in the development of thunder fruit. Natural elements that have existed in the world forever, can't compare with phantom beasts. The elements last forever, but what about the gods? Dylan had an incomprehensible look on his face, and closed his eyes again. In the originally blue sky, thunderclouds rolled in again and condensed together. G5 branch, when Belmal and Ian dragged their exhausted bodies back to the branch, Dylan hadn't returned yet. Huh, is that guy not here? In the base, apart from the orderlies and those, rogue marines, only Sherry Man was cultivating plants. He went to practice. G5 is guarded by me and Tom. Tom went to the dock today. The people at Vegapunk said that Dylan's car will be ready for inspection in a few days. Practice. Do monsters need to practice too? Today's Tahir has lost the characteristics of the fur tribe, and the whole person looks more charming and agile. 
Although Dylan insists on wearing a mask when other people are around, his, innate traits, are getting stronger by the day. Even faster than his own cultivation speed. Advertisement. Therefore, most of the time, Tahir only met with the Dante or Tom who could not be influenced by him. The second is Dylan and Shiryu, who are extremely determined. Occasionally, though, Dylan uses Tahir's, abilities, to hone their mental fortitude. Although he has great talent, his efforts are unmatched by us. Tahir walked down the stairs holding on to the banister. Just the breath exuded from his swaying figure, the surrounding ordinary marines fled one after another. Ain stared at Tahir's body, holding the, autumn water, tightly with his right hand, trying his best to resist this mysterious force. Ah, Tahir, your practice is not good either. Didn't Dylan say that if you can't perfectly control your charm ability, then your practice will always be lacking? That's right, Tahir leaned on the sofa and patted the small folding fan in his hand. He said that this kind of thing has nothing to do with the growth of strength, but more with the change of mood. God chatter. Bell rolled his eyes at the charming, beauty, in front of him, then pulled Ian, who was still a little stiff, and walked upstairs. Halfway through, Bell Mel smiled sweetly. If you need my help, I can accompany you to, practice, any method is fine. An incredulous look appeared on Ain's face. Tahir turned to look at Bell on the escalator, and said very seriously, if there is really a need, then I will count on you. You, you. Ain looked at the lazy Tahir below, and then at Bell Mel next to him. For a moment, some scenes that were not suitable for children were natural the land appeared in her mind. Seeing Ain's whole body trembling and his face flushed, Bell yelled inwardly. This little sister doesn't have conqueror's hockey, and she is a human woman, so it is difficult to resist the charm of, Vixen. Walk around, go back to your room, sister will give you a good wash. After glancing at Belmel and Ain who disappeared in the corridor, Tahir looked back. What is the so-called, state of mind? Tahir raised a finger that was as long as jade and as tender and white as a green onion. A purple flame rose from between the fingers. Tomomo may fruit. While improving his combat effectiveness, he also greatly improved his appearance and temperament. The most terrible thing is that his natural, charm, ability is actually improving at a very exaggerated speed. During this period of time, as long as Tom was in the fortress, Tahir basically stayed at home, the purpose was to spare more time for cultivation and to balance the negative effects of the charm. But the effect is not obvious. After all, the improvement of strength cannot be achieved overnight, but this weird, charm, ability is growing visible to the naked eye every day. Dylan had told him before he left last time that simply relying on strength to contain it was not a good choice. The, charming, breath was uncontrollable, and it was more due to his own lack of mood. Just a little bit, this is Dylan's evaluation of him. As long as you break this shackle, you will be able to truly control this ability, and even perfectly, awaken, the Tomomo may fruit. In the huge bathroom inside the base, Belmel and Ian were lying next to the bath. Belmel. Okay. The new world has become more and more turbulent recently, and the conflicts between the, four emperors, have become more and more frequent. We. Call. Bell Mayer lifted the towel off his face and looked up at the top of the bathroom. What are you thinking about so much? Let's be a little frustrated, we can't become a man like Dylan. Things like changing the world are far away from us. But, Bell turned his head and looked at Ian, he chose us, and we chose him. I believe he has the ability to change the world. Don't hesitate, just follow his footsteps. There will be new things in this world. Don. Belmel stretched out his hand and pinched Ian's cheek, didn't he say that? People with a pure heart are more likely to gain great power. Look at that guy Tom, since he recognized Dylan, he almost never to think about why. So he is stronger than any of us, not even Shiryu is his match. Although I am not a swordsman, I have fought with many swordsmen, and I know many swordsmen who are famous in the sea, whether it is Shiryu, Red Hair, or Hawkeye. Ian, want to become a swordsman like them, the belief in identification is essential. Only in this way can he achieve what he said, nothing can be cut. Chapter 39 The Supreme Sword As the pirate forces dominated by the, four emperors, expelled most of the world government forces from New World, the division and competition within the pirates were also in full swing. In addition to the shrinking territory of, Red Hair Pirates, other secondary players such as, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Hundred Beasts, and other secondary players are in fierce conflicts. Wanokuni, Kaido, which has been shackled in the Island of Ghosts for nearly 20 years, also began to expand outward a few years ago. In recent years, it has been attacked more frequently. Weaving Casa Village, Dylan wanders the fetid village in his uniform. Scientists are really imaginative, although Doflamingo lost the help of the little people, he still partnered with Gaisa to produce, artificial devil fruit. As for Wanokuni, Quinn was not blocked by Dylan, and naturally followed the development of history to open a large number of weapons factories here. Dylan squatted by the river and checked. The metal content and many chemicals in the river water were seriously exceeded. The surrounding plants were either dead or turned a strange grey-green color. Ah, where is this? Really, I drifted to such a strange place. A young voice sounded from the other side of the river, and Dylan glanced around. Wearing a cowboy hat and topless, Ace scratched his head as he walked along the river bank. Seeing Dylan staring at him, Ace grinned, there is someone, please ask. This is Wanokuni, the realm of the, Kaido of the beasts. Ace frowned, although he has only been in New World for less than a year, he has already heard about Kaido's reputation as, 100 beasts. 
I am the spade. No need to introduce. Ace, one of the purposes of my coming here is to meet you. What? Ace's eyes widened. He had no impression of the guy in front of him. He was so young. Wait. Ace thought back to what his Grand Line-born companions had said when he was on the ship. In the Grand Line, whether it's Paradise or New World, most pirates and marines are very rear admiral to kill each other. Generally, they mainly focus on defeating or imprisoning or even recruiting. However, there are two people who are definitely listed outside. Akainu, Sakazuki, and Dark Dragon, Dylan. For pirates, there is almost no chance of surviving these two people as long as they see each other. Ace looked at the man squatting on the ground not far in front, and compared it with the head portrait on the newspaper in his memory. Oops. Adrift here, Dylan took out two bottles of cider sherry man made for him from the ring, and threw one bottle to Ace. Ace saw that he was not as scary as in the legend, so he took the opportunity to catch the wine bottle. Yes, I don't have a navigator yet, so I got lost when I encountered currents. By the way, Uncle Tom, is your subordinate now? Well, Dylan took a sip of his drink and looked at Ace with T asterisk S on Madara's face. Why do you want to be a pirate? Ace froze for a moment, from Dylan's tone, he didn't feel any anger or killing intent, as if it was a very common thing. Like, have you eaten today? Ace was silent for a while. After he came to the Grand Line, he also heard a lot of legends about the old man Garp and the man in front of him. You know me. Dylan stood up and looked into the distance. I know, in a sense, I know most of your experiences from the time you were born to the present. So I am very surprised, why do you want to become a pirate? Dylan turned around and looked at Ace. Want to pursue the so-called, freedom. This is unlikely, you are not Roger. Or, are you trying to, prove, something to the world for Roger? You, as soon as Ace's body tightened, he subconsciously prepared to fight. The identity of, son of Roger. But then he remembered what Tom said, that man knew about your existence a long time ago, and he didn't have much malice towards you. As the temperature of his body dropped, Ace held the bottle tightly and said after a moment of silence, I want to know, is there any meaning to my existence? What did old man Garp tell you? Ace was surprised, but still replied, he said, I won't know until I've lived. So what do you think? I don't know. Ace shook his head. Everyone is disgusting and cursing that guy, and cursing his blood, I am very angry, am I really guilty because of this? If so. Dylan glanced at him. You just become a pirate, or even the king of the pirates. Then what? Destroy the world, or announce something to the world. I, Ace was stunned for a moment. He had never thought about this question. Maybe the reason for becoming a pirate was really just because people hated him so much and even wanted to torture him with various cruel methods. If the world is so unkind to me, why should I be kind to them? Do you want to destroy the world? Dylan's face was calm. Ace subconsciously shook his head. I really hated this world when I was a teenager, but I don't think so anymore, I just want to sail freely. Gather your partners and find one piece. That's it. I see. Dylan stood up and walked towards the village, Ace followed naturally without knowing why. Aren't you going to catch me? I'm not the one who caught you. Okay. Dylan glanced at Ace, who was much shorter than him. First a marine, and not old man Garp. You have chosen your own destiny, and you have to face it yourself. Certainly. Call. Outlander. Advertisement. A large net fell from the sky, Dylan stood still, Ace watched the people sticking out their heads from all around, his heart moved, and a flame ignited the vine net that rushed towards the two. Yes, it's a sorcerer. The sallow and emaciated villagers were shocked when they saw the flames emanating from Ace's body. This is the power of the officers of, Oni Island. Ace glanced at Dylan, if it was only him, he wouldn't have shot just now. But this man, although I didn't feel very strong malice or killing intent in the conversation with him just now. But all the legends about him prove that this man is definitely not a good man and a believer, in case they anger him. Hey, Dylan looked at the villagers who were about to turn and run away and called out to them. The villagers froze and turned around in horror. Some of the guys who were already weak from hunger even passed out directly. Them. Ace couldn't bear it. These people looked like poor ordinary people, they shouldn't. Shut up. Dylan gave Ace a blank look. This guy, what kind of devil does he think he is? Dylan walked up to the villagers and looked at the poor people who were shaking with shock and fear. So pirates are pirates, and they don't even understand the most basic sustainable development. The world is still counting on pirates to save it. It is simply nonsense. After taking out a large amount of food from the ring and putting it on the ground, Dylan said to them, the food is well preserved and should be enough for you to last for a while. And Dylan took out a few more bags of seeds, these are the food seeds that he asked Leo to bring from Greenbit, which are very easy to grow. These seeds are very good to feed. I can't save everyone for the time being, but I can help some. The people who were lying on the ground showed joy when they saw the food, one of the old men asked cautiously, my lord, you are not from the island of ghosts. Dylan shook his head. I'm not, I'm here to find someone, Tiongashan Fike. Where is he? Flying. The old man looked at Dylan and Ace, then nodded to them as if he had made up his mind. Please follow me, the back mountain of Bionli village. Tengu Sean Fike was wearing a mask and costume like a big Tengu, and was weaving a bamboo hat next to the wooden house. Fliker. Tiongashan Fike raised his head and looked at the crowd. They are. After describing what happened by the river, the old man glanced at Dylan and Ace, who are you looking for Fike? Ace was a little confused. In fact, 
He just came here with Dylan. He didn't know Tiangmao Mountain and Tiango Mountain at all. Dylan untied Shura and handed it to the other party. This knife, I showed the descendants of the Shimotsuki family before, but the guy was vague at the time, so I asked you to help me see it. The moment Tiangushan Fike saw Shura's scabbard, his eyes widened. Sura. Oh, is it some kind of famous sword? Seeing the other party's reaction, Ace was a little puzzled. Okay. Tiango Shan Fike held Shura in his hand and looked at it carefully, then held his breath and pulled out the blade. Without Dylan's suppression, the moment the blade was exposed, it was filled with endless killing intent and blood. Even Ace felt suffocated for a while. This. Ding. Dylan raised his hand and flicked Shira's blade, and the scarlet red blade instantly faded and turned into pitch black. Black knife. Tiangushan Fike looked at the man in front of him in disbelief, the person who turned Shira into a black knife, how terrifying. What, is it wrong for Shira to become a black sword? After hesitating for a while, Tiangushan Fike asked, May I ask, Shira? Did you forge the black sword? Or is it in this state when you got it? Dylan nodded. I captured this knife in a battle more than ten years ago. At that time, its blade was still dark red. I used it for several years before it turned black. I see. Tiangushan Fike handed Shira back to Dylan after returning it to the sheath. Presumably the Shimotsuki family has told you that it is one of the twelve knives of the Supreme Sword. Yeah, Koshiro did say it back then, but he seemed to have something to hide at the time, and Dylan didn't want to have anything to do with the Revolutionary Army at that time, so he left without staying too long. Sura, is also a very special existence in the Supreme Great Sword. Tiangushan Fike said in a deep voice, the first generation Gush, which was forged by my ancestors, is also among the Supreme Great Swords. Do you know what it is? The Supreme Sharp Knife. Dylan shook his head, the only great swords he knew were Yi, first generation Gush, Kong Yunchi, Ace, and the one in his own hand, Shira. Others, even if they are as strong as Chu Shui, Yan Mo, and Tian Yu Yuzan, are just a sequence of big sharp swords. In addition to possessing the highest forging technology and almost peerless raw materials, the biggest criterion of the Supreme Sword is that they all represent a certain will, or, power. Will. Hearing the word, Dylan frowned instinctively. He didn't like the idea of fatalism. Born under the red flag and growing up in the spring breeze, he believes that all fates are Gyuki snake gods. Although it is currently known that some legendary will may be stored in the phantom beast fruit, Dylan is still a little annoyed once this kind of thing is attached to his head. Lousy is not a happy boy chosen by so and so, so fk it. That's right, but not everyone can fully comprehend and discover the will, and it's very difficult just to get the recognition of, it. To refine them into black knives, it needs many times or even dozens of times more than ordinary famous knives. Time and emission accumulate. As for what is the will in it, it's impossible to say, only the holder can comprehend it by himself. However, I believe that your excellency has been fully approved by Shira. Oh, although the face is shrouded under the mask, one can still see awe from Tiangushan Fiki's expression. Sura, it is rumored that it was the saber of a great warrior who once led all ethnic groups to overthrow tyranny and eliminate evil. Chapter 40 What kind of lowly person keeps a diary? Master, suddenly there are a lot of delicious food in the village. A crisp voice sounded from the path in the distance, and Dylan turned his head with a smile. A little girl with purple hair was stumbling towards the cabin with a pile of food in her arms. Oh, it's Ayu, I already know. A large pile of food blocked Ayu's sight, and she didn't see other people at the door of the wooden house. When she staggered to the door and put down the food, she immediately raised her hands when she saw the tall Dylan and Ace. Eat. The food is not stolen. Surrender. The little girl surrendered. Pooh. Dylan laughed, and took out the juice that Shellyman brewed for him from the ring and handed it to Ayu. Try it. E-H. Oh. No way. Dylan's face suddenly sank, and before Ayu could react, Dylan said very seriously, it's very unhealthy to drink fruit juice before filling your stomach. Ace next to him showed a surprised look. This guy. When it was getting late, Dylan, Ace, Tiangushan Fike and the village chief were sitting around the bonfire in front of the wooden house. Ayu was sleeping soundly on Dylan's lap, holding a piece of barbecue in his hand. Has the outside world changed to this point? The face of the village chief flickered under the reflection of the bonfire. Wanokuni, has been closed to the country for hundreds of years. While picking firewood, Dylan listened to their chat. Most of the situation outside was described by Ace, and he rarely participated in it. Several big families of Wanokuni. They are all deliberately closed to wait for those so-called bullshit legends. Simply stupid. And Odin the idiot. Dylan shook his head. Odin is an idiot with great strength, but he really lacks the heart of a strong man and the means of a leader of a country. Tiangushan Fike looked at Dylan who was sitting across from him with a puzzled look on his face. After a moment of silence, he finally said, This general, seems to love Ayu very much. Hearing this, Dylan lowered his head and glanced at the young Ayu with a gentle look in his eyes. Well, I like this child very much. Her life shouldn't be so miserable. Dylan gently stroked Ayu's little head, most children in this world didn't seem to have a very happy childhood. But most children are able to face life bravely. Nami, Nuo Chigao, Sabo, Hancock, Mingo, Ayu, Luo. These people's childhood was very unfortunate, but they can change their destiny in their own way. Only Momonosuke, an idiot, would only bury his head in a woman's chest other than whining and crying. Mere trash is no longer enough to describe him. It is true, if you live in this kind of place all year round, 
Not only will you not have enough to eat, but your body and life expectancy will also be greatly affected. Tiang Goshen Fike stared at the sleeping Ayu, his expression was full of guilt and affection. Ace turned to look at Dylan, his expression a little moved. But thinking about where Wanokuni is and the customs here finally swallowed the words. While it's true that Dylan has no ill intentions towards him, it doesn't seem appropriate to ask him to save Wanokuni. And, after all, this is the middle of the new world, and now it has almost escaped the control of the world government. Thinking of this, Ace clenched his fists and thought to himself. Hundred Beasts Kaido. After staying in Kasa village for two weeks, Dylan and Ace bid farewell to the villagers. Brother Ace, Brother Dylan. Ayu looked at the two gentle big brothers with tears in his eyes, when can I go to see? Ace squatted down and touched Ayu's head. When I come back here again, I will definitely turn this country into a place where you can eat well. Dylan pursed his lips and said nothing. But the big Tengu Fike beside him was struggling. Just when the two were about to leave, the big Tengu Fike suddenly said. My Lord General, can you take Ayu away? Not only Dylan, but Ace, Ayu, and the village chief all showed puzzled expressions. After being shocked for a moment, Ace was relieved. After all, he was still a rookie pirate and had no fixed place to live. And he really felt that in New World, it would be difficult for him to protect Ayu comprehensively with his strength, but this guy is different. The whole sea is in awe of his reputation, even those legendary big pirates dare not easily set foot near the G5 branch. If there, Ayu will live a happy life. Of course can. Dylan also squatted down and pressed Ayu's shoulder, but first, Ayu must be willing. Ayu, whose clothes were covered with patches, looked a little cautious. She yearned for the outside world, but couldn't let go of her aging master. Ayu, Tengu Shan Fike walked up to Ayu and untied his saber from behind, second generation Onitsu. The world has changed so much, you can take the place of all of us to see the outside world. One day in the future, I hope you can return to Wanokuni. Tell us about your wonderful journey in the sea. Dylan frowned. This knife. Of course he knows the origin of this sword, but the, ghost, series are monster swords, it is difficult to subdue them without strong luck and strength, and a bad one may even devour the master. Tiango Shan Fike shook his head. This knife is not for Ayu, but for the general. I, Dylan was about to resign, but Tiangushan Fike stopped him. That's right, it was given to Mr. General. The twenty years predicted by my wife at that time was approaching. I would like to use this knife as a thank you gift for Lien Li Village. You think Kazuki's prophecy refers to me? Advertisement. Ayu and Ace next to each other showed a confused look, they couldn't understand their conversation at all. On the contrary, the village chief looked a little dignified. It may not be your excellency, general, even if it is not, then this knife. It is considered as the maintenance money I gave to Ayu as my master. After pondering for a while, Dylan took over second generation Goosh. Okay. Now that's the case. At the time of prophecy, I will definitely come. Regardless of whether I lead or not, for the sake of Ayu and everyone, I will also contribute to this country. When Dylan led Ayu to walk out of the village, Ayu turned around every step of the way. Although he decided to follow Master's arrangement to go to sea, how could he give up the grace of upbringing so easily? Master. Everyone. Dylan bent down and hugged Ayu, patting her back gently to comfort her. Next to the hidden port, an unmarked ship has already docked there. Dark Dragon. Vice Admiral. The two masked eccentrics felt Dylan's breath and jumped off the side of the ship. Dylan ignored them, but took Ayu to jump on the boat and touched Ayu's head. Wait here for me, that idiot ace is going to cause trouble, I'll take a look and come back. Okay. Ayu hugged Dylan and handed her juice and nodded. After getting Ayu's answer, Dylan turned around and said to CP0, protect her, don't talk too much. Otherwise, I will take your mouths off. Quote dot 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 quote. Dylan and Ace chose different paths when they left Casa Village. Seeing Ace's anxious look, Dylan knew that this guy was going to the ghost island. But now Kaido and senior cadres are away, only Yamato can fight. Yamato. Tisk. By the time Dylan reaches the edge of ghost island, the two fools are already drinking. I can't leave here. Father, that be asterisk 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 d. As soon as I step out of Oni Island, this chain will explode. Ace, one day in the future, can I also be free and go on an adventure in the sea? Of course, Yamato, I will. The sea is so vast and wonderful, you will definitely be able to get out of this place and find your own life. Tread, tread, who is it? Yamato immediately became alert when he heard footsteps. When Dylan appeared around the corner with Shira on his shoulders, Ace was startled at first, and then his face showed joy. It's you. Have you left yet? Yeah. Is it your acquaintance? Ace. Ace scratched his head. No. Not really, but. Ace stood up and ran to Dylan. If you say it, you will be able to untie Yamato, right? Please. After speaking, Ace bent down and bowed deeply to Dylan. Bondage. Dylan walked past Ace on his own, and came to Yamato. As this, a location bomb made by Quinn. Both of Yamato's wrists were trapped by huge alloy shackles, and there was a, quong quong, sound when he moved. Yes, this one, more than a year into, New World, Ace has heard too many legends about this man. With his strength, he can definitely save Yamato. Well, Dylan reached out and grabbed one of the shackles, getting a feel for the structure before the armor color permeated it. Click. The shackles deformed at the sound, and then broke and fell off. It's, 
Really unlocked. That's great Yamato. Dylan turned around and glanced at Ace. You're too happy. Boy, the other one, I'm not going to untie it for her. Why? Ace and Yamato spoke at the same time, both showing disappointment. Freedom. Has never been more within reach. But also out of reach. Seeing Yamato's disappointed expression, Dylan pondered for a while and said, of course this kind of thing depends on my mood, doesn't it? But if you have to ask for a reason. Number one. This guy was influenced by that idiot Odin, and I don't like it. Second, it's also a kind of protection for her. You'll understand next time we meet, Ace. Hearing Dylan's words, Yamato, who was originally lost, immediately stood up, and the remaining shackle made a sound with her violent movements. Why insult Odin, a man like him? Shut up. Dylan glared at Yamato. What kind of man is he? As a son, he left his elderly father to go to sea for the so-called freedom, put his father in danger and died. After returning to China, the power of the enemy actually believed in that kind of boring promise and deception, and danced naked for a whole year, so that his prestige was completely lost. As a monarch, he was distracted from fighting because of the illusion that a useless son was held hostage, causing the entire Wanokuni to fall. Obviously, everyone else has made the determination to overthrow Kaido's rule with him, but what about him? Do you still believe in the nonsense of, let everyone go after holding on for an hour? As a son, as a father, as a husband, as a lord. He is a failure, a complete waste. Yamato trembled at Dylan's words. You, do you still believe in, freedom? Do you still want to be Kazuki Odin? Such trash, you even choose to inherit his name and last wish. Just because of two diaries. Dylan's eyes were burning. Why should I help you? What scumbag would keep a diary? Think about it, Yamato, in addition to the so-called, freedom, people must also bear some, responsibility. Dylan turned around and walked to the shore. A waste like Odin, other than having a little power, is nothing but good. 